is Jim McDonald. Welcome to episode 194 of the PowerCast. Before we get started, I want to shout out my friend Dan Montague. Dan's somebody that I've known since, uh, well, as long as I've known Jesse Burdick, so longer than I've known Mark. Uh, he is a powerlifter, has been a powerlifter the whole time I've known him, but he has been coaching a CrossFitter over the last year, and uh, they have taken her ranking in the Open from 77th in the region to 6th in the region. In, course, in the course of a year, she's actually number one in Montana. So shout out to them. Congratulations on their good work. Uh, I don't know that many powerlifters who are coaching CrossFitters, at least not successfully. So awesome on their part. Uh, this episode of the PowerCast, number 194, is uh, Lane Norton. This Dr. Lane Norton, He this is his fourth show with us. I think maybe the third time we recorded. I think the last time he was in, uh, we split it up into two episodes. Uh, we talk about a lot of different things, including um, the trials and tribulations of starting a new business. Uh, we talk about Avatar Nutrition, his uh, automated coaching utility, an uh, artificial intelligence coaching utility. But the biggest thing about this episode to me, the, this, the, the takeaway for me, was that when a lot of things are going bad around you, the common denominator is often you. And uh, Lane had a rough 2016. He had some personal struggles. He had some physical uh, injury issues. And uh, he talks a lot about how he addressed those things in the course of this episode. I like Lane a lot, and uh, it was very interesting to hear uh, his take on what his 2016 was like. Uh, please like and share this episode. If you like it, it makes other makes it easier for other people to find the show. It shows up higher in the rankings in the algorithm on YouTube, which is YouTube is all about algorithm. So if you can help us out here with a like, that'd be awesome. If you could share it with your friends, that'd be even more awesome. We'll be back next week with the guys from Misfit Athletics Coaching Group. Support for this episode of the PowerCast comes from these fine sponsors, Movement Watches. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash PowerCast for 15% off your entire order plus free shipping. 8-Man Apparel for people who lift heavy weights at 8manstrong.com. Compex Muscle Stim Products at compexusa.com. Use the code PowerCast and get a 28% discount on all but the lowest price model. How much you bench.net, home of Mark Bell's slingshot, bench heavy with no pain with Mark Bell's slingshot. Bodybuilding.com, the world's largest fitness website and supplement store. Bodybuilding.com has free plans for every fitness level. Visit bodybuilding.com today to become your best self. live in West Sacramento, California. This is Mark Bell's PowerCast. This week's guest, Lane Norton. Standing just to the left of Jim McDee, here's your host, Mark Bell. What's this guy's name? Uh, oh, some random guy. Some random guy. Norton. Norton Simon. Norton. Uh, uh, Wade Lane Nordstrom. Nordstrom. <laughs> Lane, Lane, Lane Nordstrom. Lane Nordstrom. Yeah. I just, I'm like Tyrion now. You know, you just... You take whatever they make fun of you with, <laughs> and you make it your own, and they can never hurt you with it. You, you know? just roll so, with it. So actually, you know, I respect Matt Ogus. You guys know Matt Ogus? Absolutely. So anytime anybody said anything negative about Matt, like the half, half natty, natty. That's the best. Dude made, so they took it and made tens of thousands of dollars, or not hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. with it, right? So right. So how brilliant is that? Like, yeah, I, 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 I respect that. Well, you can tell what's going to resonate, right? Term. Half natty's perfect. What's that? You can tell what's going to resonate. Because it's already resonating. Exactly. Exactly. Half natty, I think, uh, just so people out there understand what we're talking about. He's half natty refers to guys that look like Lane and guys that look like our boy Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one's half natty and which one's not? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just uh, yeah, it was a some a uh, somebody a hater threw something out at uh, Matt Ogus. And basically said that he's a fake natty, half natty, blah blah blah, yeah. and that's how the kind of whole thing got started. I don't know which Matt half. Matt Ogus is fucking jack. Yeah, which half of him is natty? Is no, it like I, the left half or the right half? Or you know. do up, top and bottom? Up is top he and bottom, still probably. selling natty to people, or what is he doing now? He looks pretty jacked right now. He's pretty, but you know, Matt is like he's like five foot two or something. I know, yeah. I know. And you know, it, I, he moved right. He's not in Sacramento anymore, right? I think he moved. I have no idea. I, I think he moved to 
somewhere. Anyway, when he was here, we were always inviting him in, and he never would come for whatever reason. Matt's really quiet. I personally. think he thinks we're too fat. <clears throat> too fat. I think he's like these guys are too fat. Or he might get accused of being. Am I like live on something? What am I live? Fully on? not Maddie. Face- Facebook Live. Facebook Live. Yeah. Watch this. Watch this. this so, is... Inception. <laughs> Ooh. What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> I've managed to confuse your, Mark Bell. You've got your own things going on. So I do. Jim, how uh, <laughs> I'm taking how over is your, Gary V? <laughs> I'm t- taking over your podcast, man. I, I, I do have my Gary V water here. Mm-hmm. In case you get thirsty. Yeah, yeah, Vanner exactly. H2O. So what, what is, how is this different from normal water? Uh, that's a good question. His insistent, This is money water. Yeah, money <laughs> water. His assistant didn't even know like where you, it had come from. You, you drink they it. They just have it. You drink it and money appears in your wallet. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Or that's out of your wallet into Gary's wallet. In, yeah, <laughs> in, 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 strategically into his pocket. So last Perfect. time we had you on the show, we, we got talking about some really weird stuff. I don't know if you remember how weird how weird it truly I think got. I was but half drunk on that show, so <laughs> were you? Know, or all the way drunk? Half drunk, half naked. I'm just kidding. I just half had a, natty. A lot of monsters. <laughs> half, half everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We were talking about like jizz and space and it uh, Yeah, we were talking money, yeah, money shots on the moon. Um, it got to be really strange. Y- you porn or, or yeah? Yeah, because I think we got that because you porn was going to do something in, in space. space. Porn. Yeah. Yeah. Pornhub. Pornhub. Pornhub, Pornhub, right, right. Come on, Pornhub has way more money than the rest uh, of them. I, I, I got to get my, my porn sites. You got you know? to get your shit together. I, I'm a little rusty, a little rusty. So we've talked about this topic, I think, before, but we, we're, we're briefly talking about trolling. And, uh, you know, the question that a lot of people have for you is, why do you continually feed the trolls? Feed the trolls. Well... If I didn't feed the trolls, what else would they have to do? <laughs> I mean, honestly, um, you know, I, I actually don't – I actually have – I feel like I have fun with it. Like, most times, like uh, – actually, so one of my favorite, I think you're pretty uptight about it, but anyway, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Well, I'm listening. Well, I'm listening. So, sometimes, sometimes. I won't sit here and pr- pr- pretend like it never bothers me. Of course, yeah. The, the, no, yeah I guess no one's impervious to the, it. The, well, I guess what I'll say is the mentality of the, the hater – bothers me more than right now i've had people out there go oh lane thinks he has haters bro go read my youtube and website <laughs> my, my, my youtube and my instagram but i guess the mentality bothers me more than anything like what what if you took all that energy that you spent being negative like i have never been scrolling through instagram <laughs> and felt compelled to be like you suck you know uh, or you have on mine a couple times You're like that squat was i fuck super training a couple times <laughs> well that's because i know i can fuck with you guys so you know kinda. that's different well but, so how seriously should should people be taking the comments that well you i think make it depends on, on what you do with it right so i'm like i'm a very uh passionate emotional guy so if somebody says something nice to me i'm going to use that as motivation if somebody says something negative about me i'm going to use that as motivation i built much of my career on just taking stuff that people did negatively to me and using it to turn it into a positive. So know? it's like uh, sticking up quotes in a locker room the way a football yeah, coach yeah. does. You're like, like I, I'm I've fucking making a mark I've got screenshots on my that. phone of <laughs> negative stuff people have said to me, you know. Mostly to do with the, the – I guess what bothers me more than anything is the, the injury stuff, right? Because mm. I've been through a few injuries in my career. and I, I mean, I wouldn't say I've been through that much more injuries than any other powerlifter has been through. You well, know? no, you're hurt because you train like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> overtraining, <laughs> overtraining. Like, well, because I squat morning, apparently, you know, so it, it, it's... Oh, yeah, your it's, poor squat technique. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's why you get hurt. You deserve exactly. to get hurt because oh, you're poor hurt, squat yes. technique. So uh, I guess what I, you know, it's almost like people are are, are happy that you got injured. Oh, and yeah, yeah, of course. That I guess that bothers me more than anything because I, I can't think of anybody, even people I really don't like, I really want to get injured, you know what I mean? And I guess maybe it makes them feel more validated for... For why they don't train hard, and what I, I actually had a guy in my There's face. There's no consequence, I've, right? I've, so. I've had a guy. I, I've had this one guy. I think his name is Jacob. Come in my whipping boy on Facebook <laughs> yeah, page. What's the up, past, Jacob? The past, uh, the past couple me, of days. I actually, good job, Jacob. I actually remember your name. Awesome, awesome job. <laughs> um, epic trolling. Um, but he, uh, what did he say? He said um, something about me getting injured. And I said, well, Jacob, that's what happens when you don't train like a pussy. Yeah. You know, and I mean. <laughs> To be honest, like, show me, I mean, Tiger Woods, golf. Not like it's a high-impact sport. Right. And look how injured he is, you know. Back, shoulder, if you, yeah, a bunch of shit over there. If you, if you do anything at a high enough athletic level, you are going to get injured. It's just 
a nature of the like Cal Ripken played all these games, but he played through horrible injuries. Yeah. And by the end, told people that you know if it if it if that streak yeah. wasn't there, there was Maybe no way he would. Yeah. There's yeah. no way he would have played through it, and it wasn't good for the team. <clears throat> Brett, you know, yeah, because he's yeah. not bringing his best performance oh, every day. Brett Favre, well, I'm out there in a wheelchair. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah and you have to. I've wondered that a few times about like NFL quarterback, and I will say there is something to be said for confidence and moxie and those sorts of things, right, right. and 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 the team's confidence in their guy. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? But if you're in the NFL, you're pretty damn good to begin yeah. with, right? So people say, "Oh, this guy sucks." This guy, no, no, that guy was the best guy on his college team and the best guy on his high school right, team, right? Right. He is already like in the top point zero one percent of athletes in, in the world. So is it really better to have some guy with like half a knee and like a broken foot hobbling out there? You know, you don't know, but um, yeah. So I've I've always kind of wondered about our that. homie uh, Coach House. You know, he coaches the uh, Carolina Panthers, and he said he goes, "I gave up talking about injury prevention." He's he's one of the highest paid strength coaches in the world. He's like, "I gave up, you know, talking about injury prevention several years ago because right. exactly what you're saying." You're going to get hurt. It happens. You're playing a sport. You're trying to be competitive. You're trying to be the best. You're pushing the envelope. You're trying to squat, what, 700-something yeah, pounds, yeah. and you weigh 200. Yeah. Something's going to probably fucking hurt. Well, and, and, and the thing is, it's not – you guys know this with powerlifting. It's not, are you, it's not, are you going to injured? It's, are you not injured enough to compete, right? Yeah. Like, if yeah. you didn't incur any kind of injury, <clears throat> any kind of, like, small soft tissue injuries, whatever, while you were in your training cycle for a big meet, you probably didn't train hard enough. Or you're really young and just haven't had anything right. accumulate over time. Um, and that's that's so true. Actually, you know, I tore my pec years ago in 2008. Um, and uh, I, I can one-up that I've torn mine four times, bro. <sighs> wow. Like, you win. Talk about overtraining. <laughs> that's that's. Talk about not listening to your body. That is one contest. I'll be happy for you to win. <laughs> um, but you know that was just that was an acute thing. I never had any pain there, never inflammation or anything like that. It just and then just one day, you know. And um, when I was, my surgeon was awesome. Like it was, Did it, it happened was, with even a heavy weight. Or was yeah, it was a heavy weight. It was a heavy weight. I was doing reverse band bench press, right, right, and right. it kind of drifted back this way, and that's when it popped. Oh, um, so that probably didn't help. But you know, I, and I asked him. My surgeon was a badass. It's accumulation, um, though, right? I mean, you, you, you probably it could be the shit's tweaked forever and who whatever. knows. Uh, right. And 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 um, so my surgeon, his name was Doctor Michael Corcoran, and um, my, my it was not a tendon off the bone; it was actually in the muscle, hmm. a full thickness tear in the muscle, which they usually don't operate on. Yeah. And he said, "Listen, we we can try it, but you know, I don't know how it's going to go." It's look like, at these packs like, today; they look great. I have a, incisions like that big he did a great job but he's a, he was a surgeon for the chicago bears and he does for the u.s olympic team as well mm. so i got very lucky because that was when i was in champagne doing my uh graduate school work and he was in kankakee illinois so if you're anywhere in the midwest and you need anything to a shoulder orthopedic uh dr michael corcoran awesome guy, guy awesome guy and anyway so he he did my surgery and 12 weeks afterwards you know he's checking me out and he's like you know things look good it looks like you're gonna you know heal up and i, I said well you know, what can I do to prevent this in the future? And he said, listen, you know, you can, you know, just take all the reasonable precautions, be smart, listen to your body. He goes, he said, honestly, sometimes shit just happens. Yeah. And he talked about a, a wide receiver. And uh, I don't think he ever made the team or anything like that, but one of their practice squad guys yeah. went up to catch a pass and just went up to catch a pass in his bicep tour. That was it. He And I said, well, was it like cold or windy? He said, right. we track field temperature, barometric pressure, <laughs> Wind, he's like, right. there is no association with any of that. He's like, he said, sometimes shit just goes sideways. And I think the the scary truth that a lot of people don't want to accept is that you can do the same thing the same way a bunch of times and maybe on the 15,000th time is just when it's going to go, you <laughs> right. know? And who knows? It could be, it's probably a myriad of little factors all adding up at one time, you know? Yeah, and people don't like to accept that as an as an answer. They want a more complex solution and something that they can actually affect. Yeah, they but, want to know that something really wrong. Yeah, happened yeah, somewhere like, along the line. Right. Well, it's fix. kind. Of, it's kind of like um, you never you never want to accept. It's like why do we get planes are like one of the safest ways to travel. Why do we get scared when we get in a plane? It's because it's it, it is a physical representation that we it is out of our control. Yeah. Right? That's You're not true. gonna go up and grab the throttle and the wheel and like save the plane, right? <laughs> yeah. Like if that pilot doesn't know what he's doing, right. we're fucked. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a physical representation of you have no control over that situation. Even though driving in a car is more dangerous, you feel more safe in a car because you're yeah. like 
in your mind, you go, well, I have control over the situation. Right. When in reality, you have very little control, right? And you could get out. Right. It's hard to get out of yeah, a plane. Yeah, yeah. You're in a cylinder 35,000 feet above the earth. <laughs> yeah. But the, I think the, the, the point is, is people don't want to accept that fact that there is random chance in the universe and sometimes shit just goes sideways. And so, like, when I've gotten injured, I just kind of looked at it last, last year. Yeah, there was some stuff. Like, I think my hip injury I could have avoided. There was some hip shift in my squat mm-hmm. that I'd had that never really had problems from. And so, of course, I waited until there was a problem until yeah. we had to work <laughs> on it. Um, but, you know, like... The, the herniated disc, that I think that happened in competition at the Arnold in 2015. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that was when I tied a world record. And so, I mean, it was funny because people go, well, was it was it worth it? Was it worth it? Fuck yes, it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. yes. I, I, I don't even, I broke both my femurs. It was still <laughs> worth it. You know, like, yeah. I get, you know, it's been broken since then. But I got to set yeah. a world record at IPF Worlds on the biggest stage in powerlifting. People go, oh, you know, well, powerlifting is not that big. Well, you know what? It's important to me. Right. So right. I guess it depends on <clears throat> how severe that gets, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't want to die I, from it. Yeah. You know? I hurt my hip. I did this. I did that. And it sucked. I was on crutches for a few months or, or something like that. Like, it right. doesn't sound that bad. No, uh, but yeah, ending up in a hospital bed—that's when you're like, oh, maybe but I didn't a, make great decisions. Right. It's, it's all about what you value. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't, I, I tell this to people. Uh, I've, I've gotten far less judgmental about what people value in their lives because, you know, for example, like I coach people for a living, and for a long time I was kind of like, well, you know, you shouldn't do, you, you should have some balance in your life, and you should do this, and I'm kind of like, you know what, if being if them staying in Friday and Saturday night and being ripped is what makes them happy, then who the fuck am I to tell Maybe them what the hell to live their life? provide you know? balance. Yeah. Well, right? who, I mean, who am I to help tell somebody how they yeah. should live their life? You know? Well, yeah, people, my, my dad mentioned to me one time, he said, don't feel guilty about liking work. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, like you might yeah. like work and he's like, that's okay. You, and you can just, you know, make sure you do try to find some sort of balance. Right. Well, I think Eric Helms, uh, I don't know if you guys know Eric Helms. Absolutely. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, Eric, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Eric's a good friend of mine and, I like the way he described balance, and it's like a it's like a tightrope, right? So if you're walking a tightrope, you're gonna and then you're right. gonna overcorrect this way, right? Right. 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 So um, I think you know at any one point in time you're gonna be unbalanced in your life towards something, right? right? Mm-hmm. Like when I was in grad school, I was unbalanced towards grad school. When I was getting ready for bodybuilding shows, I was unbalanced towards bodybuilding. When I was getting ready for IPF Worlds, I was unbalanced towards powerlifting. When my kids were born, I was unbalanced towards the kids, you know. Right. And so um, now I'm in. I'm planning to go back to graduate school in 2018, do a master's in exercise physiology because I don't have enough shit going on anyway. So um, I'll be unbalanced towards that, you know. Right. But on the whole, I think what you want to look back on your life and say, you know what? I spent a good amount of time with my family. I put in work. I had fun. You know, and over the course of your life, you're living I think a life balanced. the real balanced. word that people are looking for is, is harmony. You know, it's not yeah. necessarily like – because legitimately trying to, like, balance and juggle all these things can be – really difficult but to find some sort of happy medium that gives you happiness and gives other people around you happiness is probably what you're in search of. Mm-hmm. people tend to find the th- the things that make them feel the best yeah. and and the people who are out of balance are the people who can't tell that some aspect is actually hurting them yeah well i i like you know i love goal setting pushing push drive mm-hmm. drive 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 and, um, you know, for some people that's stressful to them. They don't, right. they're not happy that way, you know, but like, if I don't have some kind of chaos in my life, I'm unhappy. Like I, <laughs> I, I want there to be like Which is, controlled chaos, yeah. you know, but you I don't like want, the noise. yeah, yeah. Like if I know, if I don't have some big ridiculous goal that's scaring the crap out of me, I'm not really, I'm unhappy. You know, Which I brings us to back to the towards. beginning of the conversation. <laughs> Sometimes you feel a little bit too settled and you got to stir up some shit on the internet. Yeah. Well, so, too. so with the trolls, with, with that kind of stuff, it's. I was actually going to say, what was that question again? <laughs> um, so uh, w- with regards to that, um, you know, one of my favorite stories, I-, I do like to have fun with it. And I never argue with people for their benefit. I'm arguing for the benefit of people watching. Because mm. I think you're never going to change the opinion of somebody you're in a debate with, right. but you're doing it for the benefit of other people watching, right? So there was this, this is back in 2010. I was prepping for shows, for bodybuilding shows. I did real well. You know, I, I got top five at all those natural pro shows. I even managed to win one. And, um, but there was this, there was this thread on, on, on bodybuilding.com. I remember this. This is the most epic thing I've ever done in my life. I'm pretty sure. Um, and it was, what the fuck is up with this Lane Norton faggotry? was the name of the, was the name <laughs> of the remember, thread. Remember yeah. That. You remember yeah, this? Remember. Yeah. So well, I remember you talking about it. Yeah. So, 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 and I That's thought, the title I thought, of today's and you know, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> 
Lane Norton faggotry. Um, faggotry. 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 Is that a word? It's great. Apparently, it, it is became on the a internet. Word. Yeah, yeah it's so, now my favorite word. So it, that it's quite a it's quite a combination <coughs> right there. So I went on there. You know, it's, it's a young guy, early twenties. He looks pretty good, you know. Yeah. But it's like one of those things. Like if you've never been on a bodybuilding stage, you don't understand how harsh those lights are. Yeah. How absolutely shredded you have to be. Anyone can and flex and take a half. And he's like, picture yeah, and he's in a, a he's got the overhead lighting in the mirror, and he's like flexing one trap, and you know, it's like. All right, guy. Like yeah. you look You're not pretty good, but on a bodybuilding exactly. Thing, yeah. So, and I'm just reading him going off about how much, how terrible I am, and why am I such a big deal, and this and that. And I, I thought, you know what? Why don't you put your fucking money where your mouth is? You know. So I just, I just was like, listen, if you're such a bad dude, you just this should be easy for you because you're such a bad dude. So why right. don't you go in your natural pro card? It should be easy for you. Go do this. I'm going to be up in your area doing a natural pro show. I'll pay for your entry fee, your polygraph fee. Uh, I'll and I'll give you five hundred dollars cash if you win, and he's like, and he, immediately the backtracking starts, right? And Whoa! It, and he's he's like, well, you know that's not enough money to justify me to stop bulking because I'm gonna be a big deal in this industry. By the way, everybody who said I get this all the time, people are like, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna beat you this thing and this that. Nobody's ever done nobody it. Ever you know? does no, it. Nobody ever. And I so he so he starts backing up. I'm like, fine, bro. And we had we had just. I had a, I, we had just like, we're just in the process of moving to Florida from Illinois and I was selling a lot of furniture. So I had all this cash lying around. I had like $3,000 right. in cash lying around. And so I took a picture of me holding a thousand dollars cash and I was like, all right, bud, <laughs> thousand bucks. And people went fucking nuts. Like body, the, that thread just exploded. Yeah. It was like 400 pages, you know, yeah. like people <laughs> chopping me, like saying, come at me, bro. And then like the Michael Jackson gif where it's like him stepping on stage and shit just got real, you know? <laughs> and then this kid just backtracking further and further. The moderators banned him. I actually unbanned him so he could come back and look at more of the comments, you know, like, and everybody's like, man, Lane's a savage. And I'm like, you know, and actually at the end of it, I said, listen, man, I actually like, I hope that you're able to do these things that you're talking about. Because my guess is if you do, you're going to have to change your shitty attitude in a way to get there, mm. you know, cause listen, there are, there are some people out there who've had success being jackasses and acting that way, but a, a hell of a lot more people is like how, how me and Mark and everybody else is right. Like you're like, when I like see Mark out, around. when I see Mark out killing it, he's got a new slanger mobile. Like I, <laughs> I'm not like, fuck that guy. I'm like, that's awesome. Like good for that guy. Like fucking crush it. You know? Right. That's, that's, I feel like rising tide floats all ships, you yeah, know? Absolutely. So I'm not, sit, I'm not sitting there looking at other people like, Ugh. I'm sitting there thinking, you know, like, what could I do better? You know? Envy is okay as motivation. Yeah. If yeah. it turns into like, you know, some, turns into something dark, then. Yeah. Well, and like, I look at all this stuff and I start like, well, I had uh, somebody the other day was telling me, I, I forget who it was, but they're like, look at all the trends that you were, I don't want to say started because I don't think it's the right word, but a big part of like. Right. Flexible dieting, natural bodybuilding, natural bodybuilding, going to it. going yeah, to powerlifting, yeah. stages of it. Um, it you know, make it online coaching, all this kind of stuff. And now, like, I've got this uh, automated coaching, Avatar Nutrition, that I put together, and um, it's you know now we've got other people copying that, and that's. But I'm like, they're like, you should really should be worth like ten, twenty million dollars. I'm like, God, <laughs> like, <laughs> stop saying that. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, and I listen. I've done well. I came from a lower middle class family, like I. I'm very happy with what right. I what I've done. Like it was never, you know. Yes, I like making money. I'm never going to sit here and say that money isn't any kind of motivation. Right. But it's more about what the figure represents, like what you've done. Mm. You know. So and you when I when I look you at also other, can't mo you can't monetize every situation. You know you can't no. you can't like monopolize and, and and make money off of every no. little thing. You know. It's no, and, not possible. No, and and you know I I, I remember when I when I. I was kind of one of the first people to really popularize online coaching in that, like I did on a large scale and people heard about it. And a lot of people I work with went on to become really successful coaches like Paul, Alberto Nunez, yeah. Eric, like right. a lot of those guys, you know? And I had a lot of people tell me, doesn't that, doesn't that bother you? And I said, no, like I feel like Bill Belichick with his coordinators well, going off and getting and, and head also, coaching jobs, right. you know, right. makes me look good. There's a lot of people who have done a lot of great things for this world and they haven't received a penny for it. Right. And nobody knows who their name is a lot of times, but, you know, the original guy that made the internet, that made the World Wide Web. Right. He could have very easily trademarked that, TM'd it, fucking yeah. patented it. And he could have been like, this shit's mine. Yeah. I'm going to monopolize this space. Yeah. But what did he do? Gave it away. He allowed everybody to use it. Yeah. yeah. Like, thank fucking God, right? Right. Because now we're all able to make money. You got products you're selling yeah. online. Yeah. 
ebooks, online yeah. coaching, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I really like, you know, I, it was a great time to be alive. It is, it's a great time to be alive. <laughs> yeah. You know, people, people talk about how bad things are nowadays and all this kind of stuff. You know, we live in the least violent society in the history of mankind. Right. Like, you would I, never you know, know it watching the news, you know? Yeah. My most hated word is when I hear people, they continually say that they're grinding. <laughs> like, we're not grind Like... If you if you have a job, bro, you woke like, up in a fluffy bed and you went and got you, coffee after pressing a button. You, you made right. a fucking text and you put up a couple posts on social media. You're not grinding. Like <laughs> grinding is when you're like out shoveling snow and shit. Like you shoveled snow. <laughs> yeah, yes, you yes. shoveled snow. Yeah. Shoveling, you know, digging a fucking ditch and all that <laughs> shit. That's grinding. Yeah, uh, we have it pretty fucking easy. Pretty nowadays. good. Pretty good. Yeah, and you know, it's. I think all of us are guilty at certain times of, oh, of yeah. kind of oh, going. Yeah, oh man, this is tough. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. and um. Well, everybody has their own level of, of too yeah. much stuff. I try you not know. to be that guy. But we, 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 you know, what bothers me, I, I did like an Insta story about this a while back, and, and, and we have a lot of this in the fitness industry, and that's false hustle. People talk about hustle. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't know about a fucking hustle. Like, these people, and a lot of them is the, the guy, guys and gals who, they have great physiques, right? but they're, they're not making the big bucks. They don't understand why. It's like, bro, like... I can go down to fucking 24-hour fitness and find a guy with a physique just as good as yours. <laughs> right. To the average person, is not going to know the difference. Yeah. Maybe you beat him on stage, well, but the average person isn't going to know the difference. And along right? those same yeah. terms, you can find a strong motherfucker at your local gym. That, Absolutely. that can rival a lot of great powerlifters. Of course. Yeah, I, every every single gym, well, not every single gym, but I think most gyms out there probably got somebody who bench presses more than me at them. They you know? probably have someone that benches close to five. They probably have someone that deadlifts around seven. Yeah. The squat yeah. might be kind of the hard one to find somebody right. who's... Right. Really proficient at that, but right, and so like, you know, like, I remember I used to get a lot of uh, hate from from some other natural bodybuilders because like, well, what's the big deal with this guy? Like, I look better than him. It's like, all right, well, did you make a hundred thousand posts on various message boards <laughs> yeah. over the last? Did you answer two hundred fifty thousand emails over the last fifteen years? Did you? Give away all this free information. Right. Did you offer to write for every little rinky dink magazine for free? Right. Like, did you write hundreds of articles for like do all these videos? No, you didn't do that. So don't tell me that you're hustling. Like you went to the gym for an hour and a half, bud. <laughs> right. Wow. And you cooked food. Yeah. Something you have to do anyway. Yeah. You know, things like, are very accelerated nowadays. So what what took fifteen years to build or ten years to build now can take a year, right. two years, or three right. years. But still, it doesn't mean that you have that pedigree behind you of mm-hmm. all those mm-hmm. hard years. Like, you still need – I was just talking this morning about, like, you really don't know anything until you've done something. It's an, just an absolute minimum, an absolute truth that I believe in, that you have to do something for at least 10 years before you know fucking anything. Yeah, dude. Whether it's training or being a waitress or mm. being a coach or – anything you have to do it for about 10 fucking years before you start to finally hit your stride absolutely it's it's there's actually um uh there's a gal named uh angela duckworth and she wrote a book called grit and she's she's a professor she basically studies successful people what makes them successful and and she found one a couple of things she said was um it's not you hear the ten thousand hour rule to become an expert something ten thousand hours right it's not 10,000 hours. It's 10,000 hours of purposeful practice, um, right? Not just like I could come in here and just squat and be like, okay, all right, all right. But no, you have to have the purpose and a goal of getting better, right? Yeah. And she talked about when she would go out for a run, her times were not improving. And she went and talked to a world-class runner. And he said, well, what do you do when you run? So, well, I put on a podcast and I try to zone out. And he's like, no, no this, is what you, this is where you're messing up. Like you need to think about your running. Right. You need to be having your checkpoints of what you need to be hitting. A lot hitting, of the best you know? people won't have headphones on. They're actually they're like they thinking like to about what they're hear doing. and feel their feet mm. hitting the ground and each strike. Yep. Because each strike kind of and the noise that each strike makes represents a certain way of running. Yeah. And and you know, the like, other oh, shit, my form's off yeah. because they hear a crunch or a tick. Yep. That's not right. And, and in powerlifting, it's like oh, I can't get my glutes to fire. It's because you're not thinking about the mass hole. Yeah. That's the problem. You're, you're not lifting way too heavy. Yeah. Is a big and part that, of it. that 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 too. Thinking about glutes. Yeah, I know. I'm always thinking about glutes. But you that's said the glutes that's, an asshole in the that's, same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that people yeah, always right, talk about. Right, oh, I can't get my glutes to fire. I can't do this. Like no, no, you can. You're just not. You're just not concentrating on it. You have to, I mean, it, lifting the best means that you're concentrating on every part of what yeah. you're doing. I mean, when I when I miss a lift or I get out of line, I, I can usually tell you exactly what I did wrong yeah. immediately. Yeah. In fact, my uh, my coach, Ben, Ben Escrow, he was, I don't go to this level, but he had a camera on a like a one second delay right. that was on the side and the 
screen was directly in front of him in a, in a squat rack in his garage. So he would squat and then look at the rep ah. and then would, uh, would make adjustments adjust on the it. fly. But the other thing, uh, Professor Duck would... feedback right away. Yeah. <laughs> but, see, that would mess me up. I'd just be like, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Professor Duckworth said that I, I really liked, and I, I think is the, the people talk about like, you know, grinding, your favorite word, uh, <laughs> being intense, like being, mm, and I, I t- I've told mode. this, anybody can be intense for a short period of time. Anybody can do that. That's right. easy. That is, especially when you're first getting into something, right? A lot of people dabble, like they, right. they dabble in stuff, you know, they get to like the 90%, but they don't go to a hundred because that yeah. last 10% is hard and takes years, Right. And uh, she said, it is stamina that makes the difference. Yeah. Intensity is important in short bursts, but stamina is what makes the biggest difference. Yeah. I said, you know, like I, I hashtag never quit a lot and all that kind of stuff. Right. And what when people don't really understand is, and listen, there are people who have really worked hard. They've done everything. They've done everything they could and they didn't hit their goals, right? But I, you know what? I promise you, they got a hell of a lot farther than they would have if they hadn't even tried or they quit, Right. right? And you know what? There may be people out there like who never quit on their goals, who didn't reach them. But I promise you, they're not that many. Like if yeah. you if you just keep doggedly going right. after something, it's hard to be denied after a long time. The the universe tends to yield to you after a <laughs> time. And what I found in my career is like when I was at like my most frustrated with anything and just being like wanting to throw in the towel and just completely exasperated, it was like right after that was right when we had a breakthrough. We had this with Avatar actually. This this. So for those who don't know, Avatar Nutrition, avatarnutrition.com, uh, is a, uh, a computer program that I, like a, basically an algorithm. It's like five pages of raw data calculations. That Sounds we, like Skynet. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. It, it, a well, little it is going to be self-aware before too long. It's I mean, going to be is, able to diet it actually and be more ripped the, than it us actually and more jacked than us. It fits the uh, definition of an artificial intelligence oh. because it responds to the user. So basically what it is is... Um, an interface where somebody can go in, enter their information, just like they would with a coach. Mm-hmm. It gives you custom macronutrient recommendations and then adjusts them every week or doesn't adjust them based on how you respond and based on what your goals are. And it works at about, I would say, 99.7%. So out of, if there's, and I use it, right? Because I just take my own coaching out of my hands. Right. It, it, so out of 1,000 people, 997 times, it would make the same adjustment that I would make on their wow. diet. Right? And, but... That when we when we launched this thing, we, we had uh, this company uh, build the website for us. Everything they told us it was ready to go. We launched it. We f- fell flat on our face. Nothing worked. The interface didn't work. People were getting negative numbers. Oh. Uh, you know, web com- web web development companies suck. They <laughs> suck. Like they're if you got good web development people, they're yeah. like gold. And we yeah, I got one. I got we, a gem. Oh well, and and we fell flat on our face. And it couldn't take credit card payments. Didn't work on iOS. Oh, okay. Socius marketing in Tampa. Fuck you guys. <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, so, but we still, we had, uh, and I was talking, uh, Mark Springer's our CEO and Katie Coles is our, our other uh, scientific officer. When that was happening, what did you do? So we, we went, we did everything we could to fix it. You know what saved us was did you Mark. Make, did you make a video? Did you email? Did you, so how Mark did you and, communicate Mark and with those Our people? customer service is what saved us. Mark and Katie and me, we were on, we were on email, hundreds of emails every day, right. telling people what was going on. Giving them their money back if they wanted their money back. Something I learned that that you may have learned as well is like, you can't when the when that happens, you can't think of anything worse. You're like, no. this is the when people talk about worst case scenario, you're like, I'm in the worst. You know, when case you launch yeah. a, when you launch a, when you launch a business and it like you fall flat on your face like that, most people don't recover from that. Yeah, you know. But here's here's the message though is that Jim signed up for your your website. He's on your, he's doing your program. He gets an email or contact with you or one of the original people developing it. Well, now you just put him at ease. Same thing with if, if he's waiting on a package that he's supposed to get and he wants to use it to work out. He's super excited. But if he doesn't know when that fucking thing's coming, mm-hmm. then he's going to bitch and complain. He's going right. to post yep. on social media and he's going to be yep. curious, right? Yeah. But the second that you call him or make contact with right. him. You may end up with a customer for life. And that's what we and did. you could say, hey, you know what? I am really sorry. We, we were trying to do everything possible. We're trying to have this be the best, most advanced technology that we can possibly have. And I'm truly sorry that this is fucked up. 
we can when it works better we can give it to you for free yeah but we love you as a customer and love to be able to keep you yeah and that's you know what, what i mean right like and that was exactly what we did and let me tell you mark had the patience of a saint because there were some people who got nasty you know yeah. for, for 10 bucks a month we're just <laughs> nasty you know yeah. like i mean it's custom well, coaching advice for 10 bucks a month it was amazing and but you know what after three months and i was talking mark and kate because i've done several businesses in my life yeah. i know I never had it go that badly, <laughs> but I, well, because I knew usually you're in control, right? Now this I, is technology, right? Like, yeah. You know, you know something about technology, but I that knew much. that, that, okay, we, you know, we're not, we but the thing was after three months, we were in the black, like mm. we had 2000, we almost had 2000 members with everything going wrong. I'm like, guys, we're actually making a profit and everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Mm. Right. So we had we, a year and a half goes by. We well, make numbers a, are encouraging. Two thousand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. great we make we make a great profit. We're doing really well. You know, we're getting some money out of it. And we're like, all right, we're we're going to go big, right? Like we're going to invest. So we're going to invest a ton of money in this thing, like and fix it. Like over two hundred thousand dollars. We're going to make all this stuff. We're going to improve all this stuff on the website. All this, and we pay. And I'm going to go ahead and say it because. They're getting sued by four other companies, so I can't sue them. Um, <laughs> type two designs in Tampa. Fuck you guys too. So we we hired. Just this, stay out of Tampa. Seriously. Really so we place. hired we hired these guys. They seemed like they knew what they were doing, and um, you know, like they just they didn't do the work. Like they just they really like they just didn't do the work. Just was, didn't do it. Just, just didn't, didn't do start. It. Just, you didn't see any progress. They, nothing. They, we got a nice logo out of it. We got a nice logo. Uh, we actually had to tell them to stop working on it because actually what it was is they were just too incompetent to actually do it. They were they were messing so they up. oversold. They were messing up our back end. Like they were actually doing development on the live website. That's oh. when we took control of it because I mean you have a dev site, you right, know, right? And we took control of it and said, "Don't touch it again." You know, like please just go away. And um, you know, but you know what we look we looked at that as like we're like all right. So now we're 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 like we're gonna hire our own people. We're gonna interview them. We're gonna make sure they know right. what they're doing. You know, we needed a CIO. We needed somebody who had a tech background. We. It's a mistake. We learn from our mistakes, right? So we're doing that. We're going to do all this stuff to the website. And, but you know what? We could have sat there and wallowed and said, man, like, we look how much money we wasted, mm. all this kind of stuff. You know what we did? We doubled down. We put more into the customer service. We put more into making sure the algorithm was even better, just worked. You know, right. so, so what if we don't have the fanciest website out there? The algorithm works great. And now, and since that's happened, we've almost, we've doubled our members. And we're growing right now at over 100 members a day. Right. So that's great. It's it's one of those things where. And as just, you grow and expand, you know what's going to happen? You're going to feel that same exact pain again. And you yep, got to have yep. the longevity and the yep. stamina to survive that too. Well, and you know, it just happens in cycles. That's just what happens. And what I told them, because like, you know, Mark and Katie were really angry because they'd never gone through anything like that. And they're <laughs> yeah. like, well, let's sue the crap out of this and that. And I, I understand that. I, I've, I've, been in, yeah. I've been in this lawsuit and I said, listen, here's here's the deal. It's hard to get paid. People all oh, sue somebody. It is so hard to get paid in lawsuits. The people right. who get paid are the lawyers. Yeah. Takes your energy, your stress. Ooh. I said, let's just invest stress. and and the time like the money you spend on your attorneys and everything, which theoretically you can get back, but you know. So I said, let's just take all that and dump it into the company. And just, you know, as Frank Sinatra said, the best revenge is massive success, you know? <laughs> and success has like a really cathartic effect at least on me like mm -hmm. uh, i remember you know i got picked on growing up a lot in high school right I, I wouldn't see that coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah right this guy no way he's a nerd right like make america science again a nerd. um available on shop uh so i i got picked on a lot and i remember i got a message after i you know kind of started my own business and been pretty successful with coaching and mm -hmm. was doing well and moved to florida and kind of living the dream you know and uh, it was a girl from my high school class who was really popular, but it always treated me very nice. She never was mean or anything like that. She said, I love every time you do something great because it's just, you must just want to stick it to the people who, <laughs> who were, and I said, and I, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? Once I got to that point, I just didn't care anymore. Yeah. Like I just didn't, it had like a cathartic healing process, you know, because it was like, what? Why? You know, too like, far in your rear view mirror. Yeah. So you also make enough noise to where it's unnecessary to say anything. Yeah, you don't have to. You don't have to go up to them and be like, "I told you so." Yeah, exactly. I told you I was exactly. kicking ass. You know, yeah. like I've heard Tom Brady say the same thing. Where 
you know, he wasn't even the starting quarterback at Michigan, selected in the sixth round. Yeah. And they asked him that same question. Like, do you feel like you need to go back and, and tell these guys, like, I told you so. He's like, I don't have to. No. Yeah. <laughs> he already told him. Yeah. He already told him five times. Yes. You know, yeah, like, right. I, I, yeah. I, you know. Oh, I saw I'm, your post about Tom Brady, too. I'm a, cool. oh, the, the Insta story? Uh, I'm not sure it was on your. I, I know you posted something about. I did a about, video, I think, yeah. You posted something about. Yeah, it was your Insta story. Yeah, yeah you, so you, I, you just talked about how he's great and, like, you're not necessarily a Patriots fan. but No, I'm, I'm a Colts fan, so yeah. I hate the Patriots, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I fucking love, to, like, I love that because, you know what? And he How plays. Do you not with, appreciate greatness? He plays with a chip on his shoulder, too. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he may say he don't want to go back and get And that's true. Yeah. But when he needs to dig down for a little bit deeper, I promise you, he remembers that he was yeah. picked at the last pick other, in the uh, sixth round, you yeah. know? There's two other great and, quotes from him that I really like. You know, someone asked him, you know, why he plays so hard, why he practices so hard, and why he's, you know, staying after practice and doing all these extra things. And he said, uh, because, because he, doesn't, he doesn't know if he's going to be the starting quarterback. And they're like, yeah. but you're Tom Brady. He's like, I'm not going to rest on that. No, I got to get better. I got to keep right, improving. Right. The other thing he said, which is amazing, and this is years ago, they, you know, he at that point he won three or four Super Bowls, and they're like, what Super Bowl means the most to you? And he said, the next one. Hell yeah. yeah. That's because his Hell mind yeah. is already focused on, like, that's what his job is, is to win another one. Winners win. <laughs> and losers lose. There's a fine line I, in, in there somewhere between truth. being having confidence in yourself and always. <laughs> striving to be better i don't know exactly where that line is but you can't bank on what he did this year yeah like I, when I he can, going into next year but know? proficiency feels really good yeah you know eric yeah. thomas says execution is worshipped you know <laughs> yeah. and it said that's why michael jordan's the greatest of all time there are other guys with better statistics than michael jordan yeah. but when yeah. it came down to i mean you you could literally say and i was telling uh my, like he my, did it every time didn't it? I, my, my film guy chad i was like you know you're too young to remember michael jordan because yeah. he's 19 years old and doesn't remember anything <laughs> but um you know, when you could literally watch Jordan. It would get to a certain point in the game, he'd go, nope, I ain't having this. And he yeah. would just completely take over the game. Right. You know? yeah. And I remember Larry Bird one time was talking after a game, and he goes, that was God dressed up disguised as Michael Jordan. <laughs> you know, Because like, execution is worship. That's why he's the greatest of all time, because yeah. he had a 103-degree fever or whatever it was. He still went out and scored 40 points. Like, <laughs> right. it, just, it just didn't matter. Winners win. You know, it's just it's, – there's something about – and – when you're young, I remember I was telling somebody about this. You just have this impression that like some people are just better at other things, right? right? You, work ethic doesn't really enter your mind, right? right? You're just like, well, Billy is really good at baseball. I'm not good at baseball. Well, you could be, right? So the first time I had this like, well, and maybe you're not good because you just said it out loud. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's well, part of yeah. it too. The first time I had this epiphany, I was uh, nine years old, and I played. Uh, they called it in Indiana. They call it minor league baseball, which is where they use the pitching machine it's before mm-hmm. little league. And uh, I, I would always been not very good at. Uh, T-ball and right, minor right. league or whatever. And I'd be out in the outfield picking four league clovers. They stuck me in right field to get me away from everybody, you know. And I was goofing You're around. Like, one, I want to be in math class. I was goofing around <laughs> one practice, and, and my mom comes up to me, and she goes, Honey, like, you know, we want you to have fun, but we also want you to, like, work at this because, you know, it's $100 for us. And, which, you know, my parents, we weren't, we didn't starve or anything like mm-hmm. that, but we're a lower middle class family. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, I, you know, because if, if you don't like it, then let's just find something else. She may be you trying know? to get you to, to grasp the idea that, that maybe you're not great at it now, but you can get better at it. So I remember thinking, well, I don't want to stop playing baseball. So I stopped. I started working at it. And I remember at the end of the year, our team did a, did a lot better than everybody thought we would. We were kind of a ragtag group. <laughs> like it's like a sandlot. You know yeah. what I mean? And um, Growing together. Yeah. And uh, we, we thought we were picked. You know, everybody thought we'd have been up last and we actually end up with a winning record. And... Um, our coach, he was actually a really great coach. He ended up being my little league coach too, and uh, Keith Lamel was his name. And he brought, he actually bought in his own money, like individual trophies, right? So most valuable player, all the sorts of, and the most improved player. And I won most improved player, and that's when it clicked for me. It was mm. like, I can work at something and get better, mm, you right. know. So as a 13 year old, like when you're young, it's not cool to have like big goals and dreams and stuff because you right. just want to fit in, right? Yeah, yeah. So I had like this on my day planner, you know, <laughs> this is before we had phones and like electronic <laughs> stuff. On my day planner, I had written on the inside of the book, "Don't you have work to do?" All right. You know, because I already I already had goals and stuff because people had told me I, you know, my peers told me I wasn't going to do anything with my life. Right. And it was like. Right, I'm going to prove you wrong. Right. That's become like kind of my favorite pastime is proving people wrong. Right. You know, so <laughs> it's, you know, when it comes to the trolls and that sort of thing, which I think is the original one question we've gotten through so far, <laughs> um, you know, I hope, please, like, I hope you tell me I can't do it. I hope you're giving me negative stuff because I'm going to use that, turn it around and use it to do something. So, all, you know, even now people say, well, look at all these injuries he's had. He's, he's never going to come back. 
Well, that's because you would quit. You want to feel better about the fact that if you were in that same situation, well, you're getting older, you, you would got quit. different things going on. Maybe it makes like that's what they're thinking in their head. Like exactly, they're thinking if they were in your shoes. And what I'm thinking they is, they would probably YouTube and do fitnessy shit, yes. and that would be the end of that, right? So I'm, th- you know, if I didn't have a passion for powerlifting anymore, I would just go to bodybuilding. I I do go do something else, but I still have that fire. I still have that passion. Maybe I'll never win another national championship. Maybe I will never go to another world championship, but I truly believe I can step on the platform again and perform at a high level. And so, you know what? And if, and if it's impossible, then we'll find out if it's impossible. Right. But you never know if you don't try. Right. And, you know, I tell, I tell people, I'm like, when you tell me I can't do it or you make fun of me or, or whatever it is and you think it's funny, <laughs> you have no idea how, make, how e- easy that makes it for me. Like, right. I am not going to get tired. Like, I don't <laughs> get tired because I, I think about all those negative things or anytime, you know, anybody's done something bad to me. It's or, your fuel. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm going to take anything. If you give me something positive. I'll use it as motivation. But if you give right. me something negative, I will turn it around and I'll use it as motivation as well. Yeah, Gary V. Uh, so I love trolls. Talks about that kind of stuff. <laughs> Bring it. Being uh, oxygen, you know? It's yeah. It's oxygen yeah, for him. Exactly. the fire. And sad. even while Jim and I were interviewing him, he just, you know, he just lit up after a while. After we got like five, ten minutes into it, he just, you could see him actually physically getting like energized and he yeah. got more and more into it as we, as we went along. Um, What do you think the biggest changes have been in powerlifting in the time that we've been involved in it together? There's been some huge changes in powerlifting. I think, uh, you know, one thing that I'm kind of noticing is that, uh, you know, people not only want to lift really well, um, but they also want to look good, too. So it's like lift good, look good. It's kind of a whole thing now. Yeah, no kidding. Like matching outfits and stuff like that <laughs> and and, and, and uh, hipster haircuts and... and uh, a pour over coffee. Like our boy and, Fat Dan with the special. <laughs> like, uh, I got a pour over right here. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, um, you know, not every powerlifter has a lot of money, and right. uh, wearing a nice watch with your outfit is a is always a good move. Uh, in in the gym, in the club, whatever. You yeah, know, movement watches came along at a great time because I don't wear a watch, and right. I've been I've been searching for watches for a while. So uh, this is something I think is going to fit me well, and. Uh, the wifey's always like, you should get a watch. You should get something that looks nice. And so these guys uh, are stepping their foot into powerlifting, and that's how we got hooked up with them in the first place. So right. I, think it's, uh, I think it's great that they're spending some time and spending some money in our space. Me too. Um, I actually like this watch a lot. I'm kind of a watch nut. I don't wear them all the time, but in part because, you know, like you spend a lot of money on a watch and then you get it banged up, yeah. you know, you get the crystal scratched or whatever, and you're like, fuck, I spent a bunch of money on this. <laughs> it's one more thing to be responsible <laughs> for, right? Like a, like a nice pair of sunglasses. Exactly. Too, right? Exactly. Uh, Powercast is proud to be teamed up with Movement Watches. We've got some really good looking watches for you to choose from with really good prices. Uh, Mu- Movement Watches started at just about 95 bucks. Uh, at a department store, you're looking about four or five hundred bucks for a similar looking watch. Uh, these are nice and heavy too. That's a great price. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, Movement figured out by selling by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and retail markup. And actually, a lot of people figured that out. And that's a that's a business model that right. is paying off for everybody right now. Uh, very classic design, uh, quality construction, and. Uh, their term styled minimalism, and I guess that I understand that that's what it, I understand what that means. It's not they're not really you know garish watches. They're right. not big nasty. Yeah, it's know. not a huge uh, clock on your wrist. Right, exactly. It's a watch. It's a watch. <laughs> it's a watch. Yeah, I noticed too. You know, with uh, you know, even with with our brand, the way that we started, and and the look is is crucial. Yeah, you know, having a sleek, clean look is crucial, and uh, you know this from you know being here at Super Training Gym from the very beginning. Is we started off much louder, right? And we've scaled things back a lot, and turning these, the volume down. Yeah, these watches kind of represent that too, where where it's got a good, clean, sleek look to it. Absolutely, get fifteen percent off today with free shipping and free returns by going to MovementWatches.com/slash/powercast. Uh, this watch, obviously, we said is really really clean design and when we open them in the in the office people were like wow i mean how much was that watch yeah it's gonna it's gonna draw on the ladies that we know that for sure (laughs) this is true so go to movementwatches.com slash powercast join the movement get your 15 percent off your free shipping and free returns join the movement thank you very much um i know that uh 2000 
16 was a rough year for you. I think in 2015, I think you did you win USAPL Nationals, yep. correct? Yep. And then you got silver. At Worlds. At, yep. at Worlds. And then whammo, something went in your back or something like that a couple months later? So I... So 2014 won nationals, went to Worlds in 2015, the following year. Gotcha. Actually, yeah. went on quite a good run. So I won nationals, won the Arnold, went to Worlds, got second. You know, got second to Kristoff, which actually we were talking about yeah, like... Something to point out. I mean, there's there's not necessarily a quote-unquote Super Bowl to powerlifting, but if there is one, it's Worlds. It's IPF Worlds. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, the competition level is through the fucking roof. There's nothing that, in my opinion, there's nothing that compares. And I know that there's other guys lifting enormous weights in other federations, but it's very scattered. Right. You got this guy, you know, squatting Top grand. to bottom, one through 20. this guy squatting a grand, and then the guy behind him squatting 600. Right. And it's just... It's different, right? Yeah. The, these meets that they have at uh, IPF Worlds, together. I would say from 181 pounds and, and just from the 181 pound class, you're, you're seeing people deadlift around 700. Oh, yeah. You're seeing squatters squatting close to 700. Look at John Hack. He yeah. squatted 657 at, one, at 183 pounds, you know? like And he's, yeah. what, 23? These people yeah. are moving some uh, unbelievable weights, and it's only gotten better. And you got Ray Williams who's in there and <gasps> a bunch of other monsters. I mean, you know, just pushing side, him. Side <clears> note. The most viral thing I've ever had go on my social media was on my Facebook. I was oh, yeah. uh, while while Ray Williams was squatting at nationals for the first you know thousand pound mm -hmm. squat in USAPL right. history. It's on my laptop. I got my laptop pulled up and I just start filming on my phone. I start commentating and cursing and like going nuts. <laughs> mm -hmm. It reached three million people and has almost a million views. Wow! Like it just went complete. And I, I'm like. How does that like? But you know, Big Ray is fun to watch, though, man. He is fun to watch. I and think we actually watched that with him. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah when we had him on, so uh, watch that video. Yeah. yeah oh, really? So, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's oh, he walks it out and he like looks oh, at the yeah. judge and he's oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then he's talking as and he he's does going the and afterwards, you know, yeah. and, man, his back is so wide. Like he, oh, he's he's a, he's a cool dude, and, you know. He, uh, but top to bottom, like one through twenty, is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy deep. You know, like uh, even in, just to, even just to get there, it's fucking really hard. Well. You know, you can psych yourself out. Because I remember when I was backstage at Worlds thinking, every single one of these dudes is a national champion in our country. Right. Mm -hmm. You can get psyched out pretty quick thinking about that, you know. And I just remember thinking, actually, one of the best pieces of motivation I ever got was from Matt Gary. Do you guys know Matt Gary? So yeah, he's uh, uh, head of the U.S. coaching committee. He programs for everybody and stuff like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Probably the best meet day coach out there in terms of attempt selection. And Matt knows powerlifting, like, especially IPF. And he... So 12 weeks out from Worlds, he sends me this email, and it's breaking down everybody in my class and all the stuff they do, and and at the end of it, and Matt's you know, very serious when it comes to this kind of stuff. Really cool guy, but very right. serious about this stuff. And he says, you have the chance to medal, but you have to be perfect. If you miss a lift, you're out. And, um, and he said, and at the end he goes, train like your life depends on it. I said, oh, sh don't tell me that. <laughs> like, don't tell Lane that, you know, so... I mean, that's what I did. Like, I remember I had some four-hour sessions by the end, you know, before before Worlds. But I wanted that bad, man, because I knew I was, like, right there. And I'd never gone nine for nine before to meet. That was my first time I ever went nine for nine was at Worlds. And yes. um, so, you know, like, I didn't win, but I did the best I could have done. Like, I'm not going to yeah. pull – I'm not going to put 100 pounds on my deadlift and challenge Kristoff. It's just right. – unless he just bombs out of the meet, I'm just not going to beat him. Like, right. in powerlifting, you are what you are. Like, I always – chuckle at these guys who think they're just going to pull a 50 pound PR out of their ass on meat day. Like <laughs> right. you are what you are, well, you know, kind of back to what you're saying earlier about, you know, like your, your baseball story about getting better. Now there's now we all possess the ability to get better. Of course. But we all also start out a certain way. Of course. And so sometimes in here we'll have somebody that might come through the door and their squat is 200 pounds. Right. That person that squats 200 pounds, I'm not saying that they never possess the ability to, uh, get into these huger numbers, but it's probably better for them to focus on something where they're stronger. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. they, they do possess the ability to get better and they yeah. could squat 300, they could double it and maybe possibly triple it. Yeah. But for that person to get to like 900 or some of these it's other, tough. or even for yourself, like if you said, I'm going to fucking squat 900 pounds, it would take such a crazy commitment of you uh, making so many changes through your life. Yeah. You would have to gain a hundred pounds. Yeah. And I mean, you have to do a lot of, a lot of things. And so, I do think it's it's you you know it's always good to strive for stuff, but at the same time, be realistic. Try to find where you're strong. If you're trying to start a brand or try to start a company, 
figure out what you're already good at. Where no. where are you are you at, where are you ahead or mm. where are you passionate or where I think you know, where, where can you outsmart somebody or where can you pick up ground on somebody? I think it's where passion and kind of talent intersect, right? right. So you want to find like some people are talented at stuff, but they have no passion for it, right? And, and some people are passionate about stuff, but they have no talent for it. Now, I would never tell somebody if they're passionate about something, you shouldn't try, right? Like, yeah. listen, right? I am not built to be a great squatter. I'm just not like I got long you know, team, long femur, right? Short torso. <laughs> I have a lot of forward lean. You guys have seen this. I've yeah. talked about it. It's Ad nauseum. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a pretty squat. It's, it's just strong, it's not. Though. But it, it's it's what my body type will accommodate. You know, it and works. um. It's one of those things where I had people telling me from a young age, well, you should, don't worry about squats, you do hack squats or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, so if I'd listened to that, I, I would have never done what I did. Right. And, but I just kind of was like, well, you know, maybe you will, maybe I would never get to that level. But man, if you'd have told me 10 years ago I would have squatted 668 at Worlds, I would have said you were crazy, you know. Right. But mm-hmm. so I think there's something to be said with don't worry about, you know what, you know, this is one of my, my main pet peeves people say. Well, what do you think my genetics are like? Or how, how what potential do you think I got? Who fucking cares? You can't change it. Whatever your genetics are, it I got news for you guys. It doesn't fucking matter because you can't change it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it doesn't change the fact that to maximize whatever you want to do, you have to work your ass off. Right. And you know what? Maybe you will be a Ray Williams and squat a thousand pounds one day. Or maybe you'll be the guy who just gets top three at a local meet. Right. But I promise you, I promise you, what and when this goes for anything. If you go and you put whatever you're passionate about, you put your heart and soul into it, you get a shitload farther than if you just didn't try. You know, if you yeah. just go, oh, well, I'm just not good at that. You know, that's what most people do. They, they, they try something for a little while and the first kind of setback or stumble they hit and they go, well, that wasn't for me. And it's like, yeah, the good well, news is you can get better. Yeah, you, get, better yeah. you get a lot better, you know. I think people just get frustrated when things don't happen quickly. Absolutely. Well, we live in the, it, we live, if yeah. I, I, this iPhone is amazing. It has more technology in it than, yeah. you know. 20 years ago than all the technology in the world Smartphone. combined, right? Yeah. But if it takes more than two seconds to pull up a website, I'm like, this piece of shit. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so we've, totally ca- we've kind of gotten that in that mode of wanting everything now, you know? And the, and the fact of the matter is, you know, our bodies are, are you know, a million, a million years of evolution. Yeah. And it's just not going to happen fast, you know? And, you know, I, it's funny. I've actually, maybe I'm a little bit of a masochist, but I've actually learned to enjoy okay. the, enjoy that process, enjoy that journey because, you you talk to most successful people when they look back when they look back fondly at what's gone on mm. they don't tell you about this when everything was clicking they tell you about man when this was when this sucked and this was going wrong and you know what i right. i made it through that and i did this and like that's what they tell you about that's what they look fondly upon yeah. because that's what makes it meaningful you know if everything was just easy i mean the, the quotation it's very cliche if it was easy everybody would do it but it's right. the fucking truth you know <laughs> yeah. like you know it, it's and people tell me like well lane you know, there's got to be average people. There's got to be people who don't strive for more. And there's got to be, I'm like, yeah, that's true. No, no matter what, it doesn't mean it has to be you. Right. You know, yeah. if you, well, if you strive averages, for more. I think, I, I think any of it is a definition placed on other, it's a definition placed on somebody by somebody else. Sure. And so I could sit here and say you're successful or I can say you're average. Right. It may or may not be true. Like you're, cause your own definition of it is really right. what matters. And that's what matters. And so if you're quote unquote average because you uh, drive a bus you know, it, then maybe he and I are maybe viewing you as average, but maybe you feel fucking awesome. No, and and the, maybe you have some side gigs and stuff that like, I don't know, maybe you're into playing the fucking guitar and you do that. And yeah. you spend time the goal is to kids. be happy. Yeah. The goal is to be happy. Right? right. And whatever gets you, that's fine. I guess what I'm pointing to is like for people, what bothers me is people who say they want more, oh. who don't actually want more. Yeah, they're not, or, yeah. you know, they... Because if you talk to... If you got to ask the question, then it's probably... And I've had, I've had this experience with people that like, you know, I have this like weird... Well, like when I say something, like if I say something, you take it to the fucking bank. I am going to do it. And I would, no, I have like a life coach now. Her name is Patty and she's awesome. Patty Evans. Look her up. And, um, I was really like lamenting one day about somebody who didn't follow through on something they said they were going to do. And, and, and Patty said, Lane, the reason you struggle with this is because when you say something that is like, you have to do it. Right. Like you, you, you put it into action. She says, most people are not people of action. Right. Most people, their words have nothing behind them, you know, and I've had this, we've had this and I don't, I don't want to name any names or go into specifics. We had this with Avatar with somebody who said they wanted to be part of it and be part of the journey Uh and this and that. When we got to the 11th hour with them to bring them onto the company and they backed out. They were out. They backed out. Sometimes why a great player isn't a great coach 
Yeah. Because they show you something, they're like, I don't understand why you can't do that. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that up. Yeah. Like, they get all pissed Most of the great you, coaches like, well, were mediocre players. You're a genetic freak, and I'm sorry, I can't follow what you're doing. Yeah, you know? Most most of the great coaches were, were yeah. mediocre. You right. know, my powerlifting <laughs> coach, Ben Escrow, he's never squatted 500 pounds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Belichick's probably, you know, he probably wasn't an amazing player. No. Probably, yeah. oh, oh. probably good. Probably because they hard. had to eke every little piece out for themselves. They had to try you know? harder, yeah. So, and, and so what I'll say is, you know, like, what bothers me is... Is, yeah, the, the 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 falsity of people who say they want to do something. If you ask, if you poll a hundred people, and you say how many of you would love to do something amazing with your lives, and you you want to do something, I would say ninety nine out of a hundred people would say they're going to say. There's probably one person in there who's actually mm. do, willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to get it done. <laughs> right, right. You know, like and that's and that's the truth. Like I, I I was distraught when this happened because it. I mean, it set Avatar back again because we had spent. A month with negotiations. Right. We had, you know, met this person's demands, all this kind of stuff, and it just, it just didn't go through. And you know what? In the end, it's, it's, it's better because you know, that's probably just not their nature to be in a startup and that sort of thing. And they're right. gonna be happier doing what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't have worked out anyway, right. right? But at the time, it was crushing because it's like you invest the time and energy in this person, and it doesn't work out. And, and you, you learn the lesson of things just aren't always gonna work out, no matter what you no, try to it, do. But you know what? There's a lot to be said for. Just, you know, I, I'm not a man of faith. I, I, I respect people who are. Right. But there is something to be said for having faith in yourself, you know, in yeah. terms of, in terms of, you know, I can't control this and I can't control that. But all I, I can control is I'm going to put one foot in front of the other. And you know what happens, happens. And if I keep putting one foot in front of the other, maybe I don't ever get to where I really, really wanted to get to. But right. I get a hell of a lot farther than I would have otherwise. And with, you know, regards to this injury stuff, which is what we started on, they got sidetracked. Uh, Welcome to the PowerCast. But, yeah, well, no, but I mean, it's it's great. This is how good, good discussions happen. You know, so I had that and then went back to, and actually it was funny because I was going to nationals uh, after Worlds. I thought, I've thought about not doing nationals in 2015 because I'm like, man, I had a good run. I won nationals, mm-hmm. won the Arnold, got second at Worlds, set a squat record. And I'm like, I don't really have anything to prove to anybody. And then I remembered somebody who said, you're not the champ until you defend the title, you know, because <laughs> yeah. it's easy to sneak up on people, but it's hard when everybody's gunning for you, right. you know, and that was the year Jesse Norris was going to do USAPL. And I had people telling me, why are you bothering going to nationals? You can't beat Jesse. And, and you know, I know Jesse's numbers and I He's knew sad, that if yeah. he, if he showed up, he'd, I, he'd probably beat me. But what I said was, you know what? That will be decided on the platform, not because I didn't fucking show up because I was scared, right. you know? Yeah, so well, I went in, and obviously, obviously yeah. it was extenuating circumstances. You know, there was the failed drug test, not from steroids or anything, mm-hmm. but because of a pre-workout that Jesse took. And I'm under no illusions that if I'd taken the same pre-workout, I would have beaten Jesse. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm right. under no illusions of that. But the point is, if I had just been like, well, I can't beat him, yeah. I would never have had the opportunity to be to repeat as champion, mm-hmm. right? So I, I qualified for Worlds again. It was going to be in the USA. My parents had never seen me compete in powerlifting. They were going to go oh, wow. um, to, to Texas and watch me. And in January, I was in the Keys on vacation, and I was squatting. And just on one of the reps, like the bar, it was a really wobbly bar. It was an old mm. gym. And uh, I got really – I've always had a little bit of hip shift, but I shifted really hard to the left, and I just felt like a pop, mm. you know. And uh, got done, and of course, tried to work through that workout. Dumb. And um, we, we always do that. Why do we always do that? <laughs> right. You know, and, and uh, end up, I caught, you know, I did, man, I did everything I could. I did rehab. I, I had two cortisone shots. They diagnosed it as bursitis in my hip. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very convinced it wasn't bursitis. And I, yeah, actually I remember probably communicating with you a bunch about it. Yeah. Tore, tore something in there because, you know, if it was bursitis, the cortisone would have done something for it. And the cortisone didn't do anything mm-hmm. for it. And, um, you know, I just got 12 weeks out. I, I rested it. I got 12 weeks out from Worlds. I tried to go in for a session with 135, and it was like an 8 out of 10 pain with 135. And it's just when, you know, and at the same time, I herniated two discs in my neck somehow. I think it was like sleeping wrong one night. I just woke up, and I was like in a lot of pain. And just fucked up. Within, within three weeks, my bench press had lost 100 pounds off of it. And, I'm you know, I'm a very confident, motivated guy. But at a certain point, you look in there and you go, yeah. man, I'm just, I need to focus on long-term getting healthy. Yeah, right. And then I was coming back, like, you know, when in the in fall or let's see, in spring, like I, I, I got a really good pr- a physical therapist in Tampa. Her name's Jamie Alumbra. Highly recommend if you're in the Tampa area. Um, she made a huge difference with me, more difference than going to the orthopedic or anything like that. And within a, a couple months of going to her in like April, May, I was back to squatting again with, with no pain. And then by fall, I was up to like 485 for five reps on squat, feeling really good. Um, my deadlift, I hit 635 
for seven. You know, I was pretty much back on deadlift bench press. I hit 335 for six. I was back on bench press. And then one morning I just woke up. I, I still don't know what caused it to this day. I woke up and I couldn't even get out of bed. My lower back was just jacked. And it wasn't, you know, I had an MRI done and like, I've never had pain like this where it just completely locked me up for me to, I, I remember watching Cubs versus Dodgers mm-hmm. from my floor, you know, <laughs> oh, um, just, and for me to get up from my floor to a standing position would take me like 45 seconds. Yeah. Like I would have to roll onto my side, roll onto, you know, the hands and knees, get up, press up off my knees and still like be in excruciating pain. And probably pain. like crunch down on your stomach oh, yeah. super hard and yeah. brace everything. And still be yeah. excruciating I pain. I blew out my back and I was... I mean, luckily I did it when I was really young, but I was like 19 or 20. And uh, even just going to the bathroom fucking hurt. Yeah. Lower back, I couldn't you know, laugh. I couldn't that's do nothing. That's the worst, man, because you can't, you can't, there's nothing yeah. you can do, you know? And I, you know, and it was so frustrating because it was like I was coming back. I was coming, and then it went all the way back down, mm-hmm. all the way back to, to the beginning, you know? And there was a, there was a moment there. It was like maybe maybe this, maybe they are right. Maybe this isn't for me, you know. And uh, how you much know, Sisyphus do I want to be? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, me and Jamie got back to work. Uh, I I contacted Dr. Stuart McGill in Canada. Oh, yeah. uh, I got an MRI done, and I had a herniated disc between L two L three, which is a weird injury for powerlifting. And actually, I think it happened at the Arnold in 2015 when I was squatting. I came up and I got kind of side like, uh, like uh. this, and I think that's what actually did it. Because the next day in that area, it hurt because L2 L3 is load. pretty high up on your lower yeah, back. Right. The pain I was having yeah, is right down by my tailbone. Yeah, normally you know? that injury is associated with like car accidents. Yeah. Like that. So I didn't have any radiating pain, nothing like that. It was all centralized on my lower back, but it was I had a it was the bulging disc that was causing me a lot of pain. It mm. was between L5 and S1. Right. So I just went to work doing the rehab exercises every single day. And now I do mobility work every single day. You know, I probably spend 30 or 30, 40 minutes between time warming up between re- rehab exercises and mobility work. I hate it. That right. For me, that's the grind stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like for me yeah. to lift heavy, I don't get like, yeah, I, do a that's bunch of shit that you don't want to do. Yeah. It's so funny. People will be like, man, you, you go in and you lift five days a week. That must take so much dedication. I'm like, stop, let's stop. Right. It would take dedication for me not to go in. Mm, you know, right. like even when I, like when I tore my pec and I had my surgery, two days after my surgery, I was in the gym doing single leg leg extensions with light weight, you know, yeah. just because I, I was going crazy. I had to do something, yeah. you know, and um, that's just, you know, where my passion is. Like I was born on this earth to, 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 to do science, <laughs> be a savage and lift some heavy weights. That's what, that's what I came here for. Okay, so let's roll back for a second and talk to me about hiring a life coach. Like, what prompted that decision and what difference does it make for you to have a, a life coach? Well, she started out as my therapist <laughs> because I had a rough year, like just the injuries and some personal issues and whatnot. And, um, I think I've you know, seen you talk about those on social media. Yeah, though. yeah. So, 2000. You know, it was just a, like a perfect storm of a lot of stuff coming mm-hmm. together. Uh, by the way, know? I think that's admirable, you know, to, to come out and well, say you know, that you, like, whatever. You, you know, know, I don't. I understand people not wanting to put stuff out there, yeah. you know, but when you present your life as a, there's so much bullshit on Instagram right. where I see these people present themselves as being, you know, basically perfect. Yeah. Mm. And I know damn yeah. well, they got all these problems going on. Right. You know, just right. for me, like you guys know me outside this power cast, right. uh, you know, outside, this, I'm the same way. Like I, right. I just, I am who I am. You know, you'll, anybody who's met me knows that this is just how I am. Right. And when I'm on YouTube, Twitter, whatever, like when I, when I get into it with trolls, it's like Paul, Paul's always like, why can't you just let it go? I'm like, cause I don't want to, cause that's not me. Right. You know, like I'm just, I'm just who I am. You know, I don't want to pretend it doesn't bother me if it bothers me. So I tried to talk about it without like getting too much into specifics, you know, obviously. And some and things just, need to be private. Absolutely. You know, and that, and that's, that's the hard part about social media now and being, you know, quote unquote, a public figure is, right. you know, your life is out there. But I, I thought, you know, how can I talk about grinding and not quitting <laughs> and all this stuff? If I don't show people the bad shit while it's happening, it's right. easy to talk about the bad shit after you threw it. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And people will say, yeah, I had this thing going on. Like I had all these things. And it's like, well, why not talk about it while you're in it? Because that has more value. I remember, um, not to the same extent, but when I was getting ready for Worlds in 2015, uh, a month out, I was dealing with a lower back injury that kind of gone on and off. And I think it was actually that herniated disc that was right. going on and off. And uh, I flew over to Denmark for some seminars I was doing and um, got over there. And, you know, like I slept on the plane actually really well. But then like you're 
I woke up at like 1 p.m. And then I had to be up the <laughs> yeah, next day at 5 a.m., you know? So there's no chance for me to sleep. That. So I didn't sleep that whole night. Got up, gave eight hours of seminars, and then went and had to squat. And I was supposed to do like, I think it was like 565 for doubles. And then, mm. the, then the AMRAP. A lot of work. And I did the doubles, and I, I went to, the, to go do the last set. I was filming it, and I just went down, and I had nothing. Like, I just failed on that on that rep. And I remember thinking in my mind, I'm like, I'm supposed to squat like 100 pounds more. Like, how the fuck am I going to do this? You know, I, I, I understand I didn't sleep and all this kind of stuff, but like, still 100 pounds, you know? Right. And I, I, you know, I, I wanted to quit. And fortunately, Ben and my wife and everybody, they were like, listen, just, you don't have to make that decision yet. Right. You know? Hmm. And let's just see how the next, and I remember squatting didn't even feel good until like a week out from Worlds until I got confident with it. It's crazy how it all came together. Again, like being on the edge of exasperation mm-hmm. and, and choosing not to quit but keep going through it. Well, I videoed that and I, I thought about, like, man, do I put this up? I, and I, before Worlds, I'm like, do I put this up where my competition's going to see it? And I'm mm-hmm. like, you know what? I can't talk about being genuine and all this stuff if I don't put this shit up. So I put it up right there. Makes like you accountable. In my, mm. You know, like, and I'm like, listen, this is where I'm at right now. I don't know if I'm going to make it to Worlds. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do well, but here's where I'm at, you know, because I want to show you guys this to show that, like, because what happens when you see these people who look like they're killing it constantly and you're just struggling all the right. time? Mm-hmm. You feel like there's something wrong with you, like you're never going to make it. And the fact of the matter is that most people who become successful – they went through something at some point that felt like it was going to break them, you know? And so again, I'm not saying that I'm the most successful guy in the world or anything like that. Like I feel like I've done pretty well for the gifts I've been given. Um, but it's one of those things where how can I talk about this stuff and talk about being motivated and talk about mm-hmm. if I don't, if I don't talk about this stuff while it's happening, you what, know? what happened uh, to your strength in that moment? I think I just had a bad day, man. <laughs> I oh, think I just okay. had a just bad day. Simple. And that squats just didn't feel good because yeah. the the couple weeks before that, I had to take completely off squatting and just do leg press and, and because my lower back was just so fl- flared okay. up. And I gave myself like two or three weeks off from squatting and got to about six weeks out. I'm like, all right, it's yeah. either got to happen or not. Like mm-hmm. I need enough, you know, repetition on I this. I think people don't hear it enough about, you know, you're, you're trying to work out. You, you have all these other workouts that lead to this particular workout. And you do 315 and 315. You, you look at 315 and you're like, is there another plate on there? Yeah. Was that, four, was that 405? <laughs> it just feels yeah. terrible. 405 feels like, yeah. and so on. And, and you just have the worst fucking day yeah. and nothing can re- like, it, it's hard to reclaim it. It's hard to, and I also don't think a lot of times people understand. I think maybe they think for uh, people in the fitness industry, oh, I just shrug it off and it's not that big, a, but it's a huge it sucks. Deal. It feels like your whole life just fucking Com- crashed yeah. down it, right it, before your very eyes. It can crush your confidence, you know, especially when you're working towards some, a big goal yeah. like that, you know. Um, and I think what is important to understand about uh, training is that training is like the stock market, okay? So you're going to go in and your workouts, you're going to have really good ones and you're going to have really bad mm-hmm. ones. And they're going to go like this, right? But what you want to see over time is that it's going up, right? So yeah. if you look in the... Everybody freaks out about the stock market going crazy and like the recessions and all. There is, I think the statistic is there is no 10 year period where the stock market has not at least broke even. <laughs> yeah, even during the Great true. Depression, yeah, yeah. right? So, and I remember I listened to a guy on the radio named Dave Ramsey, a financial guy. He just makes sense to me. It's common sense advice, but I like it. It's kind of like the advice I give for fitness. And he said, listen, if you're not investing in the stock market, if you're going to pull your money out back, remember back in 2008, and everybody's like, pull your money out, put it in gold, yeah. like doing crazy stuff. Yeah. He's like, if you're going to, yeah, because if you pulled your money out when you were at the edge, like you lost a lot of money. You only, you only lose money if you pull it out when it's low. Like that's the worst time to pull it out. You know, Mm -hmm. I, that's actually when I started investing. So I made a good amount of money off my investment. Never pull out. Never pull out. Only couches. I I have a terrible story like that. I bought Apple at 19 forever ago Uh and I held it for a couple of years, two or three years. And then uh, Microsoft came out and said, we're not going to make office for the Mac anymore. And I said, fuck it. I'm selling it. This Mm. whole product's gone to shit. Uh, After that came the iPod and the, oh my God. Son of a. I could have turned my thousand dollars into, you know, a quarter of a million dollars well, and, and over the course of 10 something years. years. Yeah. <laughs> One like, million dollars. <laughs> well, Fuck. The, 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 and training, there is a relation to training there, right? So like if you would have folk fixated on your worst session, that's you selling at a low. Yeah. Right? You're selling at a low. And I think, you know, one of the important things to realize is you, you never, you're never 
whatever your best day was, you're usually never going to be as good as your best day. <laughs> and whatever your worst day was, you're usually not going to be as good as, as bad as your worst day. For me, that's right? kind of why I'm like a, a little bit more even keel and monotone. I don't get too excited or too yeah. down. Mm-hmm. I try to just kind of grad, you know, for a long period of time, just stay like this all the time on a slight, a slight grade, a yeah. slight incline of some sort. You know? Yeah, I mean, and like people see me when I'm training, like, oh man, how can you get? Like that must be yeah. exhausting. You hyped up like that. It's like that's actually just me having fun. Like that's me having yeah. fun with it. Like I'm a energetic, outgoing guy, and mm-hmm. it just comes out when I train. Like mm-hmm. people are like, like why do you train so angry? I'm like I'm actually not angry. I'm actually having fun. Right. You know, but um, like that's keep not, talking yourself into being able to do the lift, and everybody has a different version of that. Yeah, yeah. you know, some really guys. It it's funny because you're I, about I, to do something extremely dangerous, and you're just talking your body into saying, "Hey, it's okay." Well, it's funny because people ask me about like you know that sort of thing, and they're like, "Well, why can't you?" Do it like like Mike to share, right? Uh-huh. Where like the most excited you've ever seen Mike get, he's walking out the platform. And he goes, "Whoa, whoa, Mike, calm down, yeah. calm down, Mike, calm down." He almost doesn't and have blood pressure. No, sometimes. no. But you know what? He's I promise. I promise. Seven years old. In his in his head, there's some fucked up shit going on. You know wow. what I mean? Like, he's thinking but about burning everybody your house down. <laughs> exactly. Everybody deals with that a different way. You yeah. know. And like me and Mike actually discussed this. I said, you know, if you tried to lift like me, you would lift less. And if I tried to lift like you, I would lift less. Yeah. So it's all about, you know, what works for the individual person. And um, yeah, like, you know, it, sure, it makes me look a little goofy, but like I'm a passionate, energetic, yeah. emotional guy. Whatever so, turns your amygdala on. Like, yeah. I mean, like literally when I'm about to go out for that, that squad at Worlds, I'm literally on the verge of tears. I'm so emotional at that point. Yeah. Like, I'm just like yeah, I've done doing whatever I can to get like that. But I, that focuses me, you know? And, um, yeah, use that. Back to question number two about the life coach. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, What has a life coach done for you? Uh, In general terms. I tend to be like, squirrel, 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 right? Mm. So, shiny object syndrome. Focusing me, you know? Uh, Also telling me when I'm fucking up. Uh, And, yeah, I mean, she's a savage. Like, she's (laughs) texted me and be like, you fucked up. You know, she right. like I, I was I was having a real bad week and I was on Twitter and she's like, I'm about to put the Trump rule into effect <laughs> on you. Like, I'm going to I'm going to take your Twitter away from you if you don't like calm down. I, you know? I have something for you. We'll have to add it to the feed because I don't think I can pull it up. But you uh, will appreciate this. Yeah. So I I speaking of Trump, make America science again. <laughs> Available at shopbiolane.com. <laughs> Shameless plug. Um, there you go. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> awesome it's awesome so uh you know it's just somebody to kind of be you know not my wife not my family not my friends somebody who is literally has no emotional investment right. in the outcome mm-hmm. you know just like why do you hire a coach for powerlifting right. there's so much free information on the web now right why would you hire a coach for nutrition there's so much for, you can buy you can get avatar for 10 bucks a month because right. sometimes you need somebody to tell you, hey, 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 hump the brakes a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or sometimes you need a kick in the ass and say, hey, time to buck the fuck up. Right? right. And knowing when to say those two things is really important. And I think more than anything, that's what a good coach does in anything is to know when to know when to give you a hey, hey. Right. All right. Like, it's all right. You know, and also know when to say, hey, time to man up. Right. You know, and like. And to know when to say those two things is right. really important because if you say it at the wrong time, you can crush somebody's spirit mm. yeah. or oh, you can make them complacent. Yeah. 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 I'm disappointing them. I'm letting them down. And exactly. Exactly. Want to just crumble, <laughs> yeah, I mean, crumble up in the fetal position. That's something that I think about as I get older more and more. Like, what do you say to your friends when you feel like they're off course and and like if they're you can see that they're struggling with something or whatever like how do you how do you help people in a way that's going to be appreciated and like yeah that's it's hard because i've been on both sides of it yeah i just I struggle with that all the time now i, I just th- i think the way you, you do it is you just try you to want to offend them too and 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 say hey i recognize you're like because then it's like oh shit it's that obvious that i'm in a rough spot yeah but I, but, but every <laughs> it's almost always obvious when somebody's yeah, yeah. in a rough spot yeah. that's right i think the best way to do it is you'd kind of go with your hat in your hand and you say, listen, I love you. You're my friend. Right. You know, and I, I just, I want to talk to you about this and, and listen, you don't have to listen to what I say. It's right. just my opinion, mm. you know, but I love you and I'm worried about you and, and here's why. Right. And I think if you approach it like that, you kind of let somebody's guard down a little bit. Right. You know, if you, if you approach them and say, Hey, we need to talk about something. Mm-hmm. Don't ever say, hey, we need to talk. You know, that's, no, that's you want to get somebody to put their defenses up. That's, like, that's the first up. way to do it. Yeah, you know, like, know. especially like, 
you ever been dating somebody or whatever like back in the day and say like, we, we need to talk, talk. it's like, like uh, <laughs> yeah you're out all right you're on your way out. i'm done you know yeah, we're so it's um i think you just you you kind of do it like that you know try to try to you know let your guard down and then hopefully they'll let their guard down you know yeah, but I, it's not an easy thing to do no it's not I, it's I not an easy thing to take criticism either no you know? I finally this week I was I uh, was talking to a, a friend that I know was having problems. I was talking about having problems, but he was like being open about it. But it was like, okay, I think I think about the fact that you're having you're having issues, but like, how often can I check on you and have it not be intrusive? Right. Yeah. You know, and and so I just I asked the question. And he's like, as often as you want to, and I'll tell you if it's a problem. It's like, okay, yeah. that's good. I can yeah, deal. Yeah, I, I got a buddy who's who's going through a lot of hard time right now. We kind most of, people are dying for you to lend a hand out. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. they're down on the ground already. Well, you know they what? want you to put your hand One out. One good thing about up. 2016 and all the stuff that has kind of happened is is you find out who your friends are. It's like a nice filter. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I'll tell you who true friends are. When you're at your worst, they're running towards you. Right. Yeah. And some people you thought were your friends will run away, and some people will just kind of sit on the fence, you know? Right. And I'm not saying they're bad people or anything like that, but it's just not what you thought Somebody they were. Somebody may be right? hanging with you because you're popular. And, and right. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. I mean, I've had, you know... When you grow up, you know, people tell you, well, if you ever become successful, you're going to go through people who betray you, stab you in the back. Mm-hmm. You're going to go through people yeah. who, who, you know, you thought were your friends, who you weren't your friends, or, you know, who used you for your fame or money or whatever. Right. Fame. Um, <sighs> and, and, and I always thought, huh? And, and all that happened. You know right. what I mean? All, all that stuff's happened. And, uh, but, you know, you learn from it you, and you use it. Like, I, I, whatever has happened, like, I'll just use this motivation. And, like, trust me, you know, I, I've had moments where I'd be like, I'd love to this person or whatever. And, and I just default back to the best thing you can do is just crush your goals. Right. You know, like don't, if you focus on other people, focus, focus in the negative energy. And I've done it. I'm guilty of it. Mm. If you oh, focus that that's... negative energy on other people. It's a waste of fucking time. You turn that energy around. Like Eric Thomas says, recycle your pain. You know, <laughs> you're already, if whatever's going on, you're already in pain. Use it, get something, get a reward from it. Yeah. You know? And that's the way I look at it. Like I, even when I was going through some of the, right. you know what mm. I mean? But I'm, I also knew that, oh boy, I ain't going to get tired this year. I'll have plenty. <laughs> right. Like once I'm healed up, I ain't going to get tired, baby. I'll, you know, like, and I've been more motivated than ever in my business and, you know, with, with, uh, with the family stuff and I right. like, just motivated to have the best year I've ever had. So, and you know, usually life kind of goes like that. Like if you just, if you had a really rough week, well, guess what? Like the law of averages tends to work out, right. you know, the law, you don't flip heads. 50 times in a row. You, uh, <laughs> you know, eventually you flip the tails. Do you care to elaborate any further on that, or are you just going to leave it at that? I'd kind of rather leave it at that, okay. but things have been getting better, Good. you know, and, and a lot of it, you know, a lot of it was my own doing. You know, a lot of the problems I had, you know, we, I, 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 I did an Insta story about this, right. too. I said, um, you know, if you're an adult and you're constantly having problems in your life, you're having all this mm. stuff, <laughs> the common denominator in your life is you. Right, you yeah. know, like a lot of these problems I had – some of them were outside, but some of them were self-inflicted. Right. You know what I mean? And so it, it's one of those things where I can either go, mm, 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 or I can go, mm, right. what did I do wrong? How can I well, get Well, you know what? That helps the best with anything that you're doing. And when you say, hey, I'm at fault. I should have told you about this. Mm-hmm. If I just go to him and say that, he might he might open up and say, well, I was wrong about this, too. Like mm-hmm. A lot of times that happens. Or you, you know? open up and say something you and fucked then you up. Just, and then you, then you both find out, like, oh, there's been like kind of a lot of miscommunication mm-hmm. going on here, you know? Absolutely. Well, I think, I think most people, you know, human relationships are complex. They you know? really <laughs> are. Mm-hmm. Friends, you know, most people are good people trying to do the best they can, you know? And sometimes the wires just get crossed and yeah. we, get all, we yeah. all fucked up, you know? Right. But most people are good people trying to do the best they can. You know, and sometimes oil and water don't mix. You know, right. like sometimes, sometimes you know, everybody's got two friends that they're good friends with that don't like each other. You know what I yeah. mean? You know they're good <laughs> yeah. people, but yeah. for whatever reason, they just don't get along, you know, and that happens. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think that self-reflection is really important. And, right. and not, not being overly critical on yourself either. Like sometimes it's, oh, you know, if you're always that kind of person who, it's good to do this, but it's also not good to do yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This, you know, yeah. if because you have to recover, you have to recover from stuff. You know, a lot of the message that you've delivered today is, you know, uh, is something you hear people talk about quite a bit, but maybe it's not embraced quite enough. Is not just I don't want to just uh, pigeonhole it into just training because right. there's people that don't train and don't fucking care about it. But training is a euphemism for life. Yeah, but training is a big is a big part of what we do, but also your business practices and all yeah. all the all the other things that you've done. 
uh, in the last year or so, uh, ultimately what you're training is you're training your brain and you're training your resilience and you're training your soul. And I think a lot of times people aren't getting that and they're not understanding that if you are, if you're able to be a great, uh, if you're able to be great in anything, then you can carry that greatness out into many other things. So if you're, if you're kicking ass in the gym and you, if you started out jacked and tan, then maybe not, but if you made yourself jacked and tan, if you've had impact on other people's lives, you've helped people with your training, you're going to be able to make your own products. You're going to be able to really dive into anything that you want. Yeah. I mean, I had an Instagram story about this. Like <laughs> I said, you know, if all you've done, and I, this is going to sound like I'm judging people and maybe I am a little bit, but if all you've done with, if you've developed a great physique, but that's all you've done with what, if that's all weightlifting taught you, mm, right. you failed, right. you know, because what weightlifting taught me was Goal setting, confidence, perseverance, hard work. Like it taught me all those things. Losing. And the, the teacher, yeah, lose. yeah like, how to like, lose. Oh, I just ate yeah. a bunch of dirt. Doesn't yeah, taste very absolutely. Good. You know, I, I remember like the worst powerlifting meet I ever had. Um, I was trying to squat. Uh, it wasn't USAPL. It was Raw United. And I was trying to squat uh, 657 pounds. Good which morning. Would, which would, yeah, good morning. morning. <laughs> it would have set the, the all-time drug good test morning, in America. world record. It would have set the all-time drug test American record at the time. And... Um, you know, like, and I don't want to knock anybody specifically. This is just my, this is my opinion, how I felt. Keep it down over Come there, on, Smokey. Smokey. Jesus Christ. God. Smokey took out a yeah, chair for those of you who are just listening. Yeah, wow. So. Too much of that Lane Norton pre-workout. <laughs> and I, I got red-lighted on my, my, my squats. Uh, Bullshit. For, for depth. And I still went back and looked at the tape and I'm like, <clears throat> I, I felt Compared to the other lifters I saw get lifts passed, I was being held to a different standard than everybody else. Mm-hmm. That's that what ripped. I. That's yeah. what I felt like. And you know what? I wanted to scream. I want my <laughs> Isabel was pissed. <laughs> she was like, she's like, Fuck, let's just leave. That's bullshit. You know right. this and that. And I was like, I was like, you know what? No. And, and I I knew I wasn't gonna. De- I actually had sep- I like had like messed up my shoulder oh, deadlifting. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I just pulled three fifteen and I missed a bench press. It was just a terrible meet. You know. Um, and you know what? I shook everybody's hand. I hung out with everybody afterwards. And then me and Paul got in the car to go home. And I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. That fucking sucked. You know, like I, I, like, I went until I got there and like, you know, yeah, vented the there, yeah. but I, there's no reason to show up everybody else. But yeah, it taught me how to lose, you know, right. yeah. because you know what you see, it's a character move. you know, it's easy to win graciously. Yeah, That's yeah. easy to be gracious with. It's hard to lose graciously. <laughs> yeah. That's hard to do. Also, too, if you go and yell and scream with the judges, and the next time What's that you do? come up and they and they they now flash you a white light because they don't want to deal with your fucking bullshit, that's you, you, and they're just as likely to flash you red. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, it'd probably make you make you. you more know, people pissed. people complain about IPF judging, USAPL. Judging. I will say, I've seen lifters get kind of indignant and then then pass a lift the next time. You know, they they tend to be. Whatever they're they're going with that day, they tend to be pretty darn consistent. I, mm, right. I, that's one of the things I really love about IPF is like, listen, you know what you're, you know what you're getting, and that's that's one of the things I've told people. I, I said, listen, I, I know what you've done in the gym. I know what you did at your local meet. You get to nationals or worlds, Arnold. It is a different animal. Mm, you know when you've yeah. got tens of thousands of people watching on the live stream, and there's like the the Arnold's probably the coolest atmosphere I've ever been at where there's like a thousand people right there in that room, you know, right. and yeah. everybody's going crazy. And there's that one spotlight right on you. Like that's a lot for some people, yeah, you know? And is. so it's different to go and execute it there as opposed to executing it in your, in your gym with your boys right. around you, you mm-hmm. know, clapping you and rooting you on. Even but, a local regional meet or whatever. But I took that, I took that bad meet and I, you know, I did the whole, well, I'm going to show you. And so the next meet, I, the, well, not the next meet, but the next big meet I did was USAPL Nationals. The first time I did it and squatted 650, buried it, and smoked it, you yeah. know? And it was like, you know. And, yeah, and, just be better. Yeah, and that, that's it. Just, just fuck it. Get just go be, be better. Just get, get stronger. Better. Yeah. Why not just you know? rather than focusing on everything else, want to just get stronger. Jim Rohn said you can get wiser, you can get stronger, you can get better. Right. You know, and because if, again, and it goes back to taking, um, um, Jocko Willink called it uh, extreme ownership, right? Me. It's on me. Yeah, mm-hmm. you could have had some stuff happen to you. Maybe somebody screwed you over. Maybe you had all these things happen to you. You can't control them. You right. can't control your circumstance. You can always control your circumstances, but you can control you and how you respond to mm-hmm. it, right? And so, like, listen, I'm not going to say I don't have my days where I'm like, I don't really feel like doing yeah. this shit. You know what I mean? 
But for the most part, I pull my head on my ass and I get it done. You yeah, know? And, and missing a lift, you know, in the gym, like it, 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 just as making a lift, it shouldn't really come to any surprise. Like it's really rare to have a surprise. Sometimes you're training and sometimes everything really does match up and you taper properly. And, and every was, once in a while you get a nice gift yeah, of something yeah. like where you did lift a few pounds out of your zone, but it, it's usually not like a hundred pounds no. out of your zone or 50. It's like 10 or 20. I was telling, and it, and it feels wonderful, but it, it shouldn't be of any surprise. And when you see somebody having an absolute fit about missing a lift, it's understandable that you care about it that much. But dude, just get stronger. Just get fucking better. work. Like, you know, use that negative energy. Yeah. Fucking come back and get stronger, okay. or don't. Fucking just get, get the fuck out. You know, I, I like to <laughs> use the example of Bryce Lewis. You know, Bryce had, and me and Bryce competed He's that against little each short, other. Chubby guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and Bryce competed God damn against he's each strong. other. Oh man, yeah. you know, and I, I. Beat Bryce twice at USA Nationals and 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 the Arnold. Yeah, and listen, Bryce. listen, I, and Bryce was probably stronger than me at those meets. Yeah, you know, but and he even I mean I think he'll admit it that he got in his own head. You know, mm. and and like I remember at the first meet, uh, I think Eric Helms was coaching him, and uh, Eric was telling me that like when you hit that six fifty squat and you came off and you were all fired up and he's you like, were yeah. you. He's like he, he's like I I talked I was talking to Bryce on the phone I I knew he was done you know but what did Bryce do Bryce went out hired a sports psychologist mm. worked on himself moved up weight class and now cr- absolutely going is just bonkers. destroying yeah. people yeah. you know so like every time I see him yeah. doing well he's like I'm like world championship I'm like so now. happy for him you know because that's an example of somebody say you know he could have he could have said you know what I'm just not a big meat lifter but he got fucking better you know what I mean it's gonna get stronger. That's that's what it's blame it on the weights and the stage and the whatever the yeah. fuck sound but system you, or whatever you, the hell you, you, the weather the travel but yeah. you take that and like you said you can apply it to other areas of life right mm-hmm. so you apply that perseverance to your business or your family mm-hmm. life or whatever it is and yeah I think that's the real lesson is that weight training teaches us a lot of good lessons if we're willing to listen to it and use it. Um, and so, you ready, guys, for me, guys, for me to make it awkward for you guys? <laughs> it's, I've it's been saying already, this is totally off topic, but I'm the saving whole thing's it. Thing's been awkward. What do I need to do to get Joe Rogan to listen to me? I think mm-hmm. he's ducking me. He could, he could possibly he be. Could possibly he's ducking me. Because yeah. yeah. I want to go on there. I think he listens to this podcast all Does the he? time. So he Joe, heard this. Joe, uh, he follows me on Twitter. So oh, I, I cool. think, I think. He, <laughs> well, no, like, uh, it's funny because everybody, like, every time there's an anti-sugar zealot that goes on the podcast, uh, everybody uh, tags me. Listen, I'm not pro-sugar. I'm not. I'm not mm-hmm. big sugar. Pro-big sugar. Um, actually my research in grad school was funded by people who were opposed to sugar. Right, so, right. um, but I think that there's been some drastic misrepresentation of the data. Let's, let's talk about there. that for a second. Yeah. We've been going for quite some time here, but this is good talk stuff. Some science. So to drop it on you, you know, Salt I, <laughs> you know, after, you know, doing many styles of diets for long, you know, very long, you know, and, and I don't know, mixing things up and gaining mm-hmm. weight and losing weight and so on, doing a bunch of different things. <clears throat> um, I don't personally feel that a calorie is a calorie. I, I do understand the general principle of it. And I do understand that maybe perhaps, you know, 10 grams of sugar and 10 carbohydrates are, are similar in your system. Uh, and maybe it's like, it's this much of a difference if it's from fucking uh, an apple or, or regular sugar or a fucking potato. Right. But in my opinion, there is still, there's still some differences and, My thing against sugar is just this fact is that for me personally, I tend to have an addiction to sugar. I tend to have an addiction that to where if I eat any carbohydrates, it triggers me to want to eat more carbohydrates. Hashtag triggered. It it triggers, (laughs) it triggers me to, to, to want to consume more calories than I'm supposed to. And so therefore the ketogenic style diet has always worked really well for me because I can be within a calorie restriction and have it work pretty well for me. But that's a side point. Is a calorie a calorie? Yes and no. So, but you brought it up. You brought up the the inherent rule that you had to be in a caloric restriction. Right. right. Ketogenic diet isn't magic. It puts you in a caloric restriction. Right? right. So energy balance has to work. Like we have to. If you're whatever you're doing, if you're losing body fat, you're in a, you're in a negative calorie deficit. Right. right. So now their protein, fiber have therm, have a greater thermic effect of food right. than carbohydrate or fat. Right. And it seems. It, Thermic effect of food accounts for about 10% of your metabolic rate, and right. protein and fiber tend to have about a 30% greater uh, thermic effect of Those food. Those are pretty big percentages. So, yeah. But when you when you actually add that up, it's about three to four percent difference a day. Now that being said, that's kind of a if good you look at, if yeah. you look at if you look at 
the, now the, the thing is energy balance is still working. It's just your body's having to extract more energy to get energy out of those calories. Right. The problem, the problem I have with somehow sometimes the way diets are represented is it doesn't matter how much you eat. It doesn't, it's all about what you eat and not how much you eat. And that's not true. You right. can gain body fat on a ketogenic diet. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I the, agree with that. But the, the, the difference Maybe is, even is that easier because if you eat too much, there's a lot of you're fats are very fat. high calorie. Right? Might, yeah. But if you, you know, if you look at going back to sugar and I'm not, I'm not pro sugar. Okay. The, the, all the data that shows that, that demonstrates negative effects of sugar are correlation studies. Okay. Or studies where they don't control calories in these studies. Correlations okay? too. Cor- yeah. Correlations. So the, if you look at the correlation of obesity with sugar intake, it's pretty linear until about 2000 where sugar intake starts to go down mm. and obesity continues to climb. Right. So carbohydrate the, intake in general, I think has been lower and people are, well, for the most part, Americans yeah. have done what the government has told them to do, right. except restrict calories. Right, right. <laughs> They've, when they told them fat was bad, they stopped eating fat. And when they right. told them carbs were bad, or, they I'm stopped sorry, eating yeah, carbs. The, the fat has, has gone down, but people have still gotten, yeah. Right. So the, the, the thing with sugar is, if you look at it, if you look in calorie-controlled studies, when you, if you equate for, there was actually a study done where they looked at like over 100 grams of sugar intake per day in a caloric deficit right. mm-hmm. versus about 10 grams per day. They saw no differences right. in fat loss. So everybody lost fat. Um, and even like, and here comes the warrior cry of the anti-sugar <laughs> zealots like Gary Taubes is, but what about overall health? Well, blood lipids, triacylglycerides, inflammation markers, all improved in both groups to the same extent. Right. The only difference was a very, very, very small difference in cholesterol. And that could probably be explained by the fact that the group eating less sugar ate more fiber. Fiber binds to cholesterol, causes you to excrete it. Now, that being said, I'm not saying eat 100 grams of sugar per day. Right. Because sugar is not very filling. If I take a bag of, of Skittles that's 55 grams mm, of carbohydrate, yummy. It, it's delicious, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's, it'll fit in the palm of my hand. Right. How much broccoli could I eat for that? Yeah, right. How much, right? Like, so, so, and that's what yeah. bodybuilders have known for years. Right. Yeah. So the, the, I always look at dieting as kind of like a budget, right? When I talk about flexible dieting, it's a budget, right? right. So if you're a Mark Bell and you're a meathead millionaire, right? Can you afford to go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar Slinger mobile if you can still... <laughs> Pay your pay your mortgage and put money away in your kid's college and, and right. pay your utilities and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, you can do that, right? You got some blow money, right? right. So if you got a fast metabolism, can you afford to eat a, a pop tart or something like that and still have an overall healthy diet? Probably yes. Absolutely. But if you're on poverty macros, right? We've talked about yeah. poverty mm-hmm. macros before. Or if you're on poverty income, probably not a good idea to buy the hundred thousand dollar slinger mobile, right? right? If you can't pay your rent or you, and you can't pay your utilities and all right. that sort of stuff. Well, it's the same thing with diet, right? And so, meathead what, millionaire doesn't rent, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but the poverty macros do. <laughs> so, so my, my my point has always been that I just don't like the fear mongering associated right. with with sugar and carbohydrate. And I really got a big problem with Gary Taubes. And feel get free to bring Gary Taubes on the show with me because I was at Epic in uh, Epic Fitness Summit in the UK, and Alan Aragon. You know, I'm sure you guys know yeah, Alan. Yeah, absolutely. And Alan was debating Gary, destroying him, by the way. Um, and Gary's criticizing all the studies Alan's citing saying, well, they were funded by this and they were funded by that. And then has the audacity to get up there and say, but I'm funding studies that will prove that sugar is the cause of obesity. <laughs> and I, and I raised my hand cause I'm a smart ass and I can't help myself. And I said, <laughs> so let me get this straight. All these other studies that were funded by other people are all bogus, but the ones you're funding are going to be good. And then his studies came out and was the opposite. It proved the opposite. And Alan asked him at that at that Epic Fitness Summit and said, if you if there were, if there was enough evidence shown to you, that you were wrong. would you would you change your mind? If your studies showed to you that you were wrong, would you change your mind? And he said, No. Nothing would be able He's to do that. He's too in love with his life. own concepts. I said, You're a religious zealot. Yeah. You, you should join a cult. You know? And so that's my problem is nutrition has become like religion. And I hate that. I'm not a high carb guy. I'm not a low carb guy. I'm a, I'm a whatever works guy. And for the most part, right. you find a ketogenic diet, the diet that you can sustain the best, right. that, that is the most realistic for you and you're able to stick to it the best. Then by all means, do ketogenic diet. Right. 
right? But don't try to tell me that it's magic. It's not magic. No. If if somebody else can do a flexible diet yeah. and do or it, it can it well, consume no, more I carbohydrate. People, what I hear people trying to throw around too is, oh, you know, a ketogenic diet is going to produce these health benefits. Well, anytime we get anybody heading in the right direction <laughs> of losing weight, because everybody's so fucking fat, it's a yeah. weight loss We're going to have a yeah. lot of health benefits associated yeah. with all of the different it's, forms of, of diet. It is completely a weight loss Convenience, effect. Convenience, inactivity, people fucking eating too much. I mean, all of those th- and a tons of bad habits. Those are the reasons why people are fucking fat. If you if you look at some of the data, there was a study done at Arizona State in two thousand seven where they compared. There was some, and I love Jeff Volick. Very great researcher, did a lot of the original research on keto, and I applaud him for being at the forefront and forward thinking. And there was a lot of uh, studies done comparing keto to the typical food guide pyramid diet. Right? Right. And they would show that keto would produce better fat loss effects mm. and better uh, lean body mass retention in certain situations, even under the same calories. And you know, people, well, that means keto is better. Well, they were higher. They were also higher in protein, right? right? So yeah. this study took a no- thermic effect, to, yeah. right? Right. So greater thermic effect and obviously muscle retention, right? right? Um, if you do a if you do a normal diet, higher carb, lower protein, you tend to lose. If you don't lift weights, you tend right. to lose about sixty percent fat, forty percent lean. That's what we saw in our lab. Right. If you do a high protein uh, diet, you tend to lose about twenty percent lean, eighty percent fat. Now, if you add weightlifting in, it almost goes to zero percent right. uh, lean with a high protein diet. So what this what this group did was they compared. Um, a ketogenic versus non-ketogenic diet, same calories and same protein, and right. they saw the exact same effects. Right. They tried to make some claims that they saw these markers go up in this right. ketogenic diet, and maybe that was negative for health. I don't believe that. I right. I think a ketogenic diet is perfectly fine and healthy if you can sustain it. My, my problem with the ketogenic diet, if I had one, would be most people can't sustain it for long periods of time right. because – Literally, it means if you're going to do that, and Joe, like for example, Joe Rogan, it seems like he pretty much sticks to that, and he seems right. fine with that, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? My problem is if you're trying to get somebody to do it, people don't think about the diet after their diet. Yeah. Right? And so they'll transition go transition into something my father, else. Right. My father did a, a ketogenic diet, lost 30 pounds, put back on 50. He was better right. off before he started dieting. Right. right? So, sorry, Dad. Love you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and that's really, like right. when I do seminars, I'll say, how many of y'all think we have a weight loss problem in this country. And everybody raises their hand. I say, right. you're wrong. Hundreds of millions of people around the world lose weight every single year. In fact, right. out of the obese population, six out of every seven obese people will lose a significant amount of body weight in their lifetime. So why do we have an obesity problem? It's because they don't keep it off. Right. Yeah. The average dieter loses about 20 pounds when they try to diet. Um, and which is a lot of weight. Which that's, is a lot of weight. That's a lot of weight. Yeah. Um, but, and people can speak to this, this experience. In within one year, the relapse, which is returning to your original weight or more, mm-hmm. is seventy-five uh, percent. Within two years, it's eighty-five percent, and within three years, it's ninety-five percent. So diets have a ninety-five percent failure rate, right. and one of the big reasons is they just aren't sustainable. So right. think about the way most people diet. They do whatever Doctor Oz is telling them this week. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They cut out carbs, cut out bread, cut out all these sorts of things, and so you're telling me you're never going to eat bread again, right? Now, if you're celiac, by all means, don't eat bread, but right. You're telling me you're never going to eat carbs again. Now, if you can do a ketogenic diet and you say, you know what? I'm co-. Now, obviously, there's going to be times when you're going to have carbs every once in a while. It's right. not a big deal. But if you're going to flux, because one of the ways ketogenic diet works is by getting you keto adapted because right. low carb, non-keto feels like shit, right? It, yeah, right, mm-hmm. right? Right? So yeah. that's why it's also important not to have your protein too high on a ketogenic your diet. Your fat needs to be high. I yeah. see so many of these bodybuilders. I mean, I want to punch them in the face where their <laughs> like, protein's really high. And they're like, yeah, it's a ketogenic diet. I'm yeah. like, no, protein is gluconeogenic. Like, uh, right, right. sixty percent of amino acids. Yeah. Yeah. And by high, uh, what does that mean to you? Um, you know, the, tradi- the, person, the traditional sure, ketogenic but... diet is almost seventy percent fat, right? About twenty to twenty-five percent protein, which about can, five percent carb. Yeah, which can be like really gross. Yeah, have that oh, amount yeah. of fat, and yeah. so you end up with some issues with it, like before it, before a workout, and so on. What I try to share with people is like, this is what I'm doing. This works really well for me. I'm going to share it with you. And if that's you, fine. If you choose to do it, then that's great. Mm-hmm. I've said it many times before that, in my opinion, there's nothing better than just standard bodybuilding style diets because it fuels your workouts. You can have better workouts when you have carbohydrates in your system. For me, for right now, 
I have an injury. My elbow is all jacked up. I'm shifting gears. I'm trying some different things. I wouldn't try a 600-pound bench on a ketogenic diet. It wouldn't make any sense. You know what? I actually think that you probably, I, I think for powerlifting, yeah, if you it kept probably, your, if you it kept your actually, weight. It probably you wouldn't make a big down. difference. The, the reason being, powerlifting is not really a glycogen depleting exercise. Right. Yeah, you know? that's true. Um, if you were like a sprinter, I would say doing a ketogenic diet would that's be the dumb. other thing that I point out quite a bit too is that is the fact that See, here I am defending the ketogenic diet. Yeah, there so, you go. So I'm not an This is why Joe Rogan is not calling you. You're well, just too wishy-washy. I'm, I'm too, You're <laughs> waffling on the keto. I'm not a zealot enough. I just got to get up here and pound my fist and say sugar's right. the greatest thing since sliced bread, you know? <laughs> but honestly, like, I, the reason I, I, like, a lot of people want to see me on Rogan, and there's been, I mean, people went to his Instagram after, I think it was I, the I Gary I mentioned Towns you while I was on Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. High, high five. Boom. So, um, is that I think Joe's a very, very smart guy. And, Joe? Libertarian, libertarian lane. So, like, I, I believe that if he's presented with enough evidence, he may change his, he may mind. Change his mind. I so, think he likes evidence, too. Yeah, so my, my problem is the guys that have come on, like Taubes, like some of these other guys, are not giving the, – they're misrepresenting the data. And right. I would just like an opportunity to, to kind of play a little bit more of a moderate person who's not for or against anything, mm -hmm. but just for the data for the truth. Right. The question that we always get and what I try to share with people is that when you lose weight. Now that weight, you guys' podcast isn't great because <laughs> I love the 50 people that listen to it. <laughs> there's, uh, there's 73 now. 73? Yeah, we're up to 73 yeah, people. One woman then. Uh, I think Half a woman? It's 11. 11. 11 actually, women. actually, it's more like 11%. Oh, but <laughs> there you wow. go. Yeah. Wow. But what I hear all the time and whenever I post anything about keto or post a food or whatever, people are like, did you lose strength? Did you lose strength? Again, what I always try to reiterate to people is that just when you lose body weight, that you probably are going to lose strength Absolutely. if you were strong to begin with. And bench press is the first thing to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to have a longer range of motion. I mean, there's all kinds of leverage things. And I'm not talking about five pounds, and I'm not talking about 10 pounds over the course of three months. I'm talking about 20 pounds, 30 pounds. Absolutely. That's when your strength is really going to. But you're not losing strength because you're like dying or like, like a, muscle like a, like a yeah. bodybuilder mm -hmm. right. you know, getting ready for the oh. stage yeah. you know you're not losing strength because like of that. ptsd for my last contest <laughs> yeah, it's not like you you're know. zapped it's just because you lost weight so yeah losing weight and gaining strength don't really go together correct no no i mean you, there are people i mean i've got i got stronger going down from 220 when they changed the weight classes 220 to 205 mm -hmm. you did it i did it very slowly very long period of time mm -hmm. and bench stayed the same. So actually right. relative got stronger, yeah. mm. but you know, I went from 391 bench to a 391 bench, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but I lost 15 pounds, which was pretty good. So, right. you know, like I said, I, I tend to be, you know, and I, I, I was at a round table about, um, where mm, ketogenic diet was, pizza. was being discussed. And, uh, <laughs> oh, doctor, uh, doctor, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have heard of Dr. Dominic DiGostino. Absolutely. Yeah. A professor at UFSF. Mm -hmm. A good friend of mine. Good friend of mine. And people go, how can you guys be friends? Like you're anti-keto. I'm like, I'm not anti-keto. I'm anti-zealotry. You know, right. and somebody there was a person in the audience who stood up and was talking about how ketogenic diets negatively affect, uh, you know, endurance performance. And I grabbed the mic and I said, oh, that's not true. Right. It's not true. Once you're keto adapted, you can use ketones just fine for endurance. You know, now sprint stuff, anaerobic exercise where it's lasting in that kind of 45 to 90 second range of right. failure. Yeah, that would probably be negative. And, and I think with, with some bodybuilding style training, you may actually see some decrements. But powerlifting, right. I don't think so. Powerlifting, fat guy sport. Fat guys eating fat. You know, actually, I tell people all the time my favorite uh, my favorite story of yours is about like you, you, do, you don't refer to people uh, fat by their weight but by their behavior. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite <laughs> thing. So he's like the fattest that's guy true. at our gym. Yeah, you're true. both benching, right? And the one guy <coughs> drops a wrap and you like looks up at you and you look at him and he looks back up at you and he's, you're both like. Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> so he benches the whole workout with one wrap on, he then the uses one, yeah. unwraps it, uses the velcro to fish it off the ground. He My wasn't fat in the mind, though. He was fat everywhere. He was, <laughs> he was literally. So, so that's one where the uh, the outside matches the inside. Oh, huh? That's right. absolutely excellent. All right, so you got your uh, products on uh, bodybuilding.com. Talk yep. about this stuff a little bit. How, first of all, how did that happen? Well, you know, I've had a relationship with them for ten years, longer. Oh six. I started right. I started writing for them in two thousand two. Oh, the internet wasn't even invented. I back know, then. man. Good job. Know. This is, is when bodybuilding.com's message to see board. The future. There was three thousand people on it, and it was a scrolling message board where if you posted in September and now it's December, you got to scroll yeah. all the way back up to see if somebody replied. And now to they your have post. like a million, whatever the hell, like unique million. visitors or something it's every crazy. single day Cra or whatever they, the no, hell it is. Thirty million. Fucking crazy, insane. crazy. That's so nuts. you know, um, this is back when Ryan DeLuca was still CEO. Yeah. And Ryan and I always had a really good relationship. And um, he, he just Facebook messaged me one day and he said, you know, we've really underutilized you. 
He said, you know, we, we should talk at the Olympia. Like, uh, mm. you know, we should do more stuff together. And I thought they, you know, videos or, or content or whatever. I said, yeah, sure, man, whatever you want. Like, because I've always, very loyal to Ryan. When I, in 2003, I went to the Arnold. Nobody knew me back then or anything like that. And I went and I said hi to Ryan because, you know, I said, I just want to know, like, my name's Lane Norton. I write for your Appreciate site. Appreciate the opportunity. I, I, I thank you for the opportunity, mm. right? By the way, all you fitness people out there trying to make it, be ready to do some stuff for free. Like, don't expect to get paid your first time. Not just some expect stuff, to, you know, but a lot of, a shit lot of for stuff free. for a long so time. So I wrote for free and was grateful for that shit, right, for the exposure. But anyway, Ryan DeLuke, he knew immediately who I was, mm. my articles. He's like, oh, I love your stuff. And he's talking to me about my contest prep article and all this stuff. And I'm, like, blown away that this guy mm. is the CEO and knows that. And we're just sitting there talking bodybuilding for, like, 30 minutes. And he goes, hey, you, you want to go get lunch? And took me out to lunch. And I just I had a really good impression. So ever since then, just been, like, really had a lot of loyalty to Ryan so I went to a meeting at uh, the Olympia with him and um, and some other people and uh, and John Hardesty, and yep. uh, they said, you know, you know, you're you're familiar with you know Jim Stepani's line, and how would you feel about doing your own line through Bodyline.com? Like, and I was like, do I get a Slinger Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> like it sounds awful. <laughs> but you know, I, I I did have you know some cons- I I never really wanted to get in the supplement industry, mm-hmm. not because I don't like formulating products. I do like formulating. And I'd always just put my own supplements together because there was nothing out there that I really... There were some products I liked here and there, yeah. um, but there was always something missing, you know? Mm. And But I was worried about, okay, how am I going to be made to promote it? You know, how am I going to... And it was funny. As soon as Bodybuilding.com approached me, I had two other companies approach me, mm-hmm. you know? And I felt like the pretty girl at the dance. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, um, There's another and, lesson to learn here is that you shouldn't be so quick to say yes because... Whenever someone's, whenever there's going to be a financial exchange, you're on the hook. Yeah, you're on the hook. It's it's mm. your name on there. Yeah. It's your ass. It's like, I mean, yeah. you know, you don't. I don't want to get. I said, I said, yeah. listen, if you look, and I told him, and I didn't think this was going to be the case, but I said, if you're looking for a guy to get up there and be like five thousand percent more muscle, like uh, that's not me. You right. know, I'm gonna be like, you know, this has a little so bit you of need benefit. To know you can do it you your know, way. Yeah. This, you know, nutrition and training mm. is the most important thing. This stuff is the last little bit. You know, if you got a little extra money. And this stuff's really, really important to you. Then this can make a little bit of difference in your recovery and, tra- and performance, right. you know. But um, you know, the whole line was kind of the concept was designed around of, you know, these these supplements don't really build muscle. Right. They don't really build muscle. What 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 a supplement can do? Some of these can do, help you train harder, less fatigue, recover better, so you can get more out of your training sessions because your training is what's going to drive your hypertrophy. Right. right? Like. For the most Makes part, sense. people talk about it's 80% tr- nutrition and 20% training. That is 100% bullshit, okay? <laughs> this is coming from a guy who did a PhD in nutrition. Training is by far most, more, more important. You can eat the perfect diet, perfect diet, and your body's going to sit there. Right. The, your training is the impetus for you to grow, okay? So this line is designed around helping you perform better, uh, recover better. So we have, you know, right here we have prep and recover. So prep is our, our non-stimulant-based pre-workout. So, and the reason I came up with a non-stimulant based was, you know, I, especially like on off days, I still wanted to take my creatine, my citrulline, betaine. Not uh, really a reason to be all hyped up on tons of caffeine. No need to have 250 milligrams of caffeine, right? Or maybe some people train at night and they Mm, they can't get to bed if they've had that. Or maybe some people just like the option of taking it. You know, they're just going to go in and do like not a super intense workout, but they don't need a full on, you know, but they can't get their, their, the, the supplements that improve fatigue resistance and enhance right. performance without getting that big dose of caffeine. And right. caffeine is cheap enough. Drink, drink a cup of coffee yeah. or grab a monster. Right. You know? right. So I wanted it to be kind of uh, malleable. And actually, we have a, I think there's still a stack on Bible.com where you can buy a prep and get a, caf- a bottle of caffeine for free. Sure. You know, so if you want the caffeine, with, and the main the main criticism on the site that's why it's not it's not like perfect rating is well it doesn't have caffeine. <laughs> I'm like I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then Recover is um, kind of our post-workout recovery product. It's got branch chains, uh, carnitine, citrulline malate, and uh, tart cherry extract, which actually is really cool. Um, has been shown to decrease delayed onset muscle soreness, hmm. which, by the way, soreness is not equated with growth. If you want to be sore, go out and run a marathon. I promise you'll be sore. Do you think you grew muscle? No. Okay, that, that, that <laughs> debate is over. Okay. So, kind of the opposite, maybe. Um, yeah, and what happens so you is... maybe you, perhaps don't need soreness to... Soreness is not a... It doesn't no, have the direct, not a direct the, correlation. What, what I would say is that you should probably get sore sometimes. Right. If you're getting sore constantly from your workouts, your programming sucks. Hmm. Um, because if you're sore all the time, you can't train frequently enough. Right. Okay? Right. So... What recovery is going to do is it's going to help you recover better. So that tart cherry extract, those BCAAs, BCAAs, as you like to say, BCAAs. they've been shown to reduce muscle soreness. They've been shown to actually improve 
the rate at which, um, but basically one of the ways they measure recovery is they'll have you go in and do a strength test after you've done a sh- session before that. Right. Mm. And the quicker your strength recovers is how they gauge recovery. Well, tart cherry and BCAAs have been shown to shorten that time that it takes to recover your strength. So Seems especially like it helps for, you work out a little longer too. Right. Yeah. The, there is some data to suggest that. So, you know, again, it's, it's designed around recover better, perform better. Uh, and then we have a whey protein isolate, which uh, our, start, our salted caramel is flavor is in my opinion really good. obviously a little biased but in my opinion the best tasting protein on the market and uh you know it's a whey protein isolate now i'm not going to sit here and tell you that a whey protein isolate is more anabolic than a whey concentrate it's not but it's lower carb it's lower fat it has less lactose for, or almost no lactose for those who are, are sensitive to that mm-hmm. and it's hypoallergenic and i wanted something that most people can't tolerate not most but a large number of people cannot tolerate a whey concentrate it gives them gastrointestinal distress. And I mm. wanted something that everybody could use. So that's why I went with the whey protein isolate. It's a little bit pricier, but it tastes fantastic. And for a whey protein isolate, it's really priced competitively. So, you know, I, was, I didn't want to do some. And the other thing that's unique about our brand, before I go on too long, we list every ingredient on the side of the bottle. There's no hidden no dosages. Proprietary There's no proprietary blend. blends. And I, yeah. I don't want to badmouth anybody, but if you're saying proprietary blend, there's a reason you're saying proprietary blend. Right. It's because you're salt bay, fairy dust, and stuff in there, right? Mm-hmm. Like, why, if you were using a full six grams of citrulline malate, why wouldn't you want to advertise that you use a full six yeah. grams of citrulline malate? And it's pe- a fudge factor. And it's, you know, it's a little bit on the price you're in as far as supplements go, but uh, I, tell, I, I tell people, okay, well, all the ingredients are listed on the side there. Right. Go build it yourself and let me know if you saved any money. And what right. you'll find is. It doesn't have fillers and crap in it, yeah. Right. What you'll find is, I mean, our ingredient list is like nine ingredients long. Right. You know, like it's it's pretty short. And what you'll find is is you, you'll you probably about break even, but it won't be flavored mm-hmm. and it'll taste like crap. <laughs> so why not just get it all together? So um, I'm really happy with the products. You know, it started out moving Good. pretty slow just because, like I said, I'm not willing to lie about my supplements. And I'm mm-hmm. not willing to sit mm-hmm. here and tell you like, like a lot of other people. I just, you know, at the end of the day, I want to look back and whether I make a ton of money from it or a little bit of money, I want to be able to look back and say, you know what? I promoted, I, I acted in a way that made me proud. You know, you I go. don't want to, I don't, money's going to come and go, but your integrity is forever, you know? So I want to be able to, to look back at least at the end of my life and be like, you know what? I didn't do everything perfectly, but I did the best I could and I didn't sell my soul. So I, I'm really proud of how the lines came out and hopefully get to do more cool stuff with it. Where can people reach you? Uh, so the best place is at my site, biolane.com. And then I'm biolane on almost all social media. So I'm on the YouTubes. I'm on the Instagrams, I'm on the Twitter, um, and then on uh, Facebook, I'm facebook.com slash Lane Norton. So that's the only different one. Multi- hop, multiply your muscle, multiply your hustle, and may all your shits be tapered. <laughs> Look at those biceps. Sneaky. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram and Twitter. My YouTube is Super Training 06. Later. Shout out to all our sponsors, Ape Man Strong Apparel at apemanstrong.com, bodybuilding.com for all your supplement me- needs, including carbon from Lane Norton. Compex USA for cutting edge muscle stim machines. Increase your bench press at howmuchabench.net and Power, the only strength magazine available in both digital and print at thepowermagazine.com. Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to movementwatches.com slash powercast. I am the Jim McD everywhere that I want you to find me on social media. Follow the show on Instagram. We are at Mark Bell's Powercast. And we're out. Hey now. Ooh. If you made it this far, you must have liked this thing, so hit that like button.